Hello lovely people, welcome back to the Distinct and Jovial podcast. My name is Dominic and again I am joined by my wonderful co-host Jerry. How are you doing Jerry? Evening Dom, I'm very good thank you. How are you? Yeah, very very good. Uh, We have trialled our new software. Uh, You may have seen the bonus podcast that came out in auditory form on Spotify and all the other platforms that we use um, and video form. Uh, And if you're watching this on YouTube, you will now be able to see myself and Jerry. So uh, we are, how we say, we've definitely, I've got a face for uh, radio. Uh, Jerry is this wonderful, handsome man, as you can now see. I don't think so, but thank you very much, Tom. (laughs) Um, We have had a bit of a a palaver setting up for this one. First time setting up for a a, um, video podcast. Uh, was was fun in terms of lighting, uh, and then I decided to throw a litre and a half of water over me just before we were about to start. It's very specific. I like that. Not a litre, not even just tons of water, but yeah, a litre and, and a half. half. It's like yes. when people say, "Oh, how old are you?" When when you're sort of up to about the age of ten, people say, "How old are you?" And you say, six and a half." Yeah, yeah. Five and Do three you say quarters. That- <laughs> It's the other point on that though is at what point do you stop saying months? So, for example, I you know you for a baby you go oh they're like eight months and then maybe like thirteen months and then maybe you know but at what point does it become years? I think when you're in your (laughs) thirties. I am four thousand six hundred and seventy-two months. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even. I'm going to calculate how many months old I am. My my dad, my dad, the massive nerd that he is, and I don't know how he worked this out. He <laughs> posted on my Facebook. You can go back on my Facebook page, and it's about. It must be about two thousand and seventeen, and he posted on my Facebook, "Happy uh, ten thousandth day alive." So he's calculated, and he can't have done it by coincidence. He can't have gone, oh, I wonder how many days alive Dom's been. Oh, look, it's 10,000 days today. He must have put a reminder in for his calendar or something. That took some effort. So that shows what brought me up. (laughs) Fair play. And, you know, as somebody who is 592 months old, (laughs) I totally get that. Is that what you just worked out? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> 592 months or that, yeah. that probably puts me at uh, I must You're be half 364 <laughs> yeah, yeah 364 months but mine's easy because I turned 30 <laughs> yeah you, you 364 month old people you, <laughs> you got your whole lives ahead of you whole lives ahead of me this is episode number 11 uh, it is the 22nd of April 2022 when we are recording this, so only about a week after we recorded the bonus episode, um, and as per always, the views that we post in this podcast are our own and do not represent the company this, that we work for, companies, company, um, company, which shall we shall, we must remain, <laughs> we must make sure that we refer to as the company or the division uh, rather than <laughs> the like name. It's a novel, I like it. It does, it does. Stolen from um, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo third book. Okay. Which, if you haven't read, you must read. I haven't read it. I've got them. I've got the trilogy. Great series. Mm. Great series. But you get an opportunity to read them, and I know you're a big reader. I am. So, in this podcast, we're going to do another death battle special type thing again, because I... I really enjoyed the last one that we did. Um, had some really crazy ideas, um, and Jerry's come up with some absolute monsters in the <laughs> in the notes that we've got. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to we'll, this. Um, yeah, and we have some sections that are 100% stolen. Which, judging by the colour of some of the the food items that I have in front of me, I'm not looking forward. To <laughs> this one, this one is just. Yeah, that I, I'm actually genuinely worried for you. <laughs> and 
probably worth going and consulting a doctor or calling 111 after you take a bite of that. <laughs> afterwards, just afterwards. Afterwards, just to make I've sure you're okay. It's all good. Have some scans. Um, we'll, we'll do our best to describe <laughs> to our o- normal auditory listeners what we're doing. So what I held up was... Um, I don't know how to, I don't even know it I've just realized it's quite moist. <laughs> what it's I'm holding up to is say it, that word and not laugh. I mean I'm it does accurately describe this twinkie that I'm currently holding up in my hand. Yeah, it's moist. Moist plastic. But fortunately that's not the first one, it's the middle one, so I can wash it down with some other better foods. So uh food of the month section uh the first question jerry and it seems that you've just you've just discovered them should double stuffed oreos be the default 100 percent. i don't even know why they bother making the regular ones <laughs> what's the point the double stuffed oreos are the future you get the per- it's a perfect ratio of biscuit to filling that's it have Job you had ha- have you had a normal oreo since you've had a double stuffed one I have. Yeah, I have. Um, Are they just not uh, a thing of just disappointment? Y- yeah. The, 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 the standard Oreos now are like a metaphor for my life. <laughs> <laughs> right? You <laughs> have to explain that one to me. <laughs> just my life's one big disappointment. No, oh. I'm joking. No, it, it's... it's um, no, on a serious note, I've, I have had the, the regular... Oreos and and it doesn't actually seem right. It's too dry. If that makes sense, there's you too much biscuit. Enough, there's too much biscuit, so it's too dry. So if you're going to put some kind of a creamy filling in it, then put a decent mm. amount. Otherwise, don't bother and then just have dry chocolate biscuit. If that makes sense, because I like rich tea biscuits. And if you were to put a filling into two <laughs> between two rich teas, mm. fine. But you'd have to put shed loads of filling in there. Yeah. If you're going to fundamentally change the the texture of a yes. thing, you need to properly change the texture of a thing. Yeah, it's like the um, you know those biscuits which are the Balsam chocolate biscuits. Mm. Right, they're they're, yeah. they're about sixty seventy percent chocolate, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that works. Now, if they were to flip that round the other way, it wouldn't be the same. No. It's a, like a, 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 a Twix is mostly filling yeah. rather than, yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's little things and, exactly. and the ratios are just right. And do you know, it's interesting because they always do that thing where you're supposed to dip Oreos in milk. Um, now, I'm not a big pint of milk, drink pint of milk type person, but if I was to dip Oreos, the other thing I've noticed is that the easiest way to do that would be to stick a fork through the middle, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I don't think there's enough stuffing for me to stick a fork through the stuffing kind of like that on a normal Oreo. I don't think the, I think the, st- the the fork would be too thick. I think you'll find if you try and shove a fork through the middle of an Oreo, mm. you're going to have a crisis on your hands. <laughs> Why? Okay. Well, you're going to lose the top layer of biscuit. That's just automatically that's going to break <laughs> off and just go all over the shop. Yeah. Then it's going to go into the filling, and if it ha- no, no, if you no, happen not, to not through not through the biscuit, like diagonally in the uh, like in the middle. <laughs> Hang on, I've got an Oreo to demonstrate because no. I've got you I've got double you stuff. weren't you weren't explicit <laughs> about going through it this sideways way. or that way. Yeah, that would yeah, work. Yeah, that way. Yeah, that would yeah. work between the two biscuits. Unless things, the like palms a are very thick. <laughs> <laughs> but there isn't a lot of room on like a. This is a double stuffed one. There isn't a lot yeah, of room there. If you got a normal one, which should be half, right? And then I, this could, and I'm not going to do that. I was going to squeeze it to see what happens. <laughs> you see, that's also going to go horribly <laughs> wrong if you tried to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's going to go squeeze. That's really wrong. But to put like a, you know, a fork that way in a normal one, it doesn't work. I don't know. And I'll explain while I've got the Oreos in the middle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but doubles, look, thanks to you, I've discovered the beauty of double stuffed Oreos mm. and yeah they're the best I've only got one complaint with the double stuffed Oreos and that's all the other flavours that they do they don't do them in double stuffed okay because you can get different flavoured like birthday cake 
Oreos, but they're only ever like single stuffed. Yeah, and they do have like I don't know how they do it. It's it's an, it must be an American thing to be able to make things taste like something different. But the, they seem to they do taste cakey. It's the only way I can describe it. But very generic, kind of that real that real children's like you know <laughs> like every single child birthday cake tastes exactly the same it i don't does. know how they do it yeah it does <laughs> but it it tastes like that so um what are you gonna do but yes that's how they managed to do that what are you gonna do i'll tell you what you're gonna do dom you're gonna put pen to paper and you're <laughs> gonna write a very strongly worded email email letter <laughs> what, <laughs> what? <laughs> you're gonna do both those things you're gonna write a <laughs> pen a strongly worded letter, and then you're gonna you're gonna convert it to a digital medium. <laughs> and send it yeah, because I ain't using space. Royal Mail. <laughs> <laughs> My letter won't get there. It won't. They'll go. Yeah. Oh, look, this is from Dom in the bin. <sighs> yeah, well, you've done it now. You shot yourself in the foot. No, I definitely. They're shot not, they're in not the foot. sending anything now on your behalf. They weren't impressed with my complaint that I put in a couple of days ago. <laughs> they're done with you. It's like McDonald's. I'm dead to them. They're, they're not. They're never going to. Yeah, they're not going to sell me breakfast or or lunch or dinner. True, true uh, point life. that the customer is not right. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if the customer's right or wrong. McDonald's wields the power. <laughs> they do. They do. Uh, the second bit of the food of the month, which is why I have this orange it's no other words it is orange twinkie um is because we're gonna well we've, we've put together a little bit of a food wars um to give our opinion now i've gone away and gotten quite a few of the bits that we're going to discuss because some of them i haven't tried and also gave me an excuse to buy double stuffed oreos uh jerry has uh two uh, well two other humans and two dogs in the house which means i'd imagine that food lasts about three seconds <laughs> in the house so um, last long. No. <laughs> double stuffed oreos were con- consumed so the first one and i can i can hold this up look you got chocolate hobnob nice or double stuffed oreo cool nice without the fork so- yeah, without the fork. I didn't bring a fork with me, but that, and that hobnob is melting everywhere, so I didn't <laughs> consider that. Might be to do some ASMR as I eat them. Or eat one of these. Which one do you think is the best? It's very difficult, isn't it? I'm going to eat this one. That's here. a tough one. Mm. <laughs> That's a tough one. I... So the hobnob would have it, hands down, if it was a single standard Oreo. Mm. But because we're comparing double stuffed, I think I think the Oreo's got it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> As that sticks to the. I didn't really mouth. think this through <laughs> when I was doing this. Was to get the food and try it. I didn't realise it's going to take me forty-five years to chew that. I mean, to be fair, I did grab the whole double stuffed Oreo and I just put it in one. Which is hey, there's no there's no other way to do it. You don't need to apologise. I'm not sure there's another the, uh, other way. I don't think I could do a whole hobnob in one. No, that's the I, problem. I think that's a bad move. And the other issue with it is hobnobs are great. I did see it. T- <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. I saw a video. That chocolate is melting all over. This one. I saw a a, a, a video. Um, and is, is it Nature Valley bars? Yes. I don't know if you. Yeah. yeah. And basically, it's got like a, a the, the premise of the video. This bloke takes a Nature Valley bar, or, or, and he kind of and he kind of bites the corner off it, and then it then the camera switches and and points down, and then he just drops like it must be sawdust or something like about twenty <laughs> ton of sawdust, which is exactly what happens when you eat a Nature Bar. You go like that, sh- and it's just everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> it is messiest thing. And you can sweep that up, and you can use it in a rabbit hutch. <laughs> you it's can use it in a rabbit hutch, right? Mm. It's been a while since I've had a hobnob. I think that's changed. I don't think that's as good as it used to be. Oh really? No. What? Not as not as much chocolate as you were expecting. Not this. I always remember hobnobs to be how to call it really kind of the tougher digestive. 
And that felt like just a digestive to me. Okay. A digestive that just gets stuck in your teeth as well. <laughs> For those watching on YouTube, you get to see all my facial expressions as I'm doing this <laughs> and stuff like that. So I have to admit, I think I'm, I'm with you. I think that's going to be a double stuffed Oreo for the win on that one. Look at that. That's the chocolate number. See, we, d we did this last time in the battle as well, so we have to do the, like the boxing bell. Ding, 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 that's ding. That's it. It goes to the Oreo. Interesting. You do get more hobnobs in a, cr in a packet than you do as the Oreos. Yeah, you do. You get more that's how bang they, for your buck. Yeah, that's how they that's how they do you in on a double <clears> stuff because the packet size is the same size as an as a as a standard Oreo one. So you get I think it's like sixteen, and then you get like nine I think in the in the double stuff. So like, stingy buggers, stingy buggers. Cool. Well, that I didn't expect that. I thought it was the hobnob that would win. Um. Because it certainly, I certainly gave someone this American British feel. I thought, yeah, we've got to stick with the British, but oh, it's going to have to be the Oreo, I think, that one. So, what? One nil to USA. USA. One nil to USA. USA. <laughs> USA. <laughs> Second one. So we've got. I've never had these before. They're called Mike and Ikes. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if you know of. Um, we've both got a very. Uh, we've got a friend who was the one who recommended this. Um, uh, my manager's other half. If, that, if that's the best way to do it. Um, I don't know if you've fought your way into the box yet. I haven't, but I'm doing so now. Now, did you read the bit that says push here to open? <laughs> yes, of course I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, I, 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 I popped the top. Like that. <laughs> and well. I've just done exactly the same. So... For the uh, for the visual users, Mike and Ike's. It's, uh, it it's a very it open, um, Oh yeah, for f yeah, there. <laughs> for flip sakes, okay. <laughs> you we've opened it at the same end, and it's oh. right next. So I opened it, and as I as I opened this, pulled this tab, I went, oh yeah, it says. <laughs> I failed at the first hurdle. So, these these flavors. Have a listen to some of these flavors: Caribbean Punch. Strawberry banana, paradise punch. What the heck is paradise punch? Grape soda, kiwi banana, mango delight, pineapple banana. I'm not sure that's too okay. Watermelon, peach berry, and blue raspberry. I want to try the pink one, which is the paradise. Um, you go for paradise. Paradise, paradise punch. I'm going to go for grape soda. I think. Remember, mm. each one of these that we eat takes a month of our life. Holy Jesus. Oh, wow. How chewy are they? Um, Dom? Yeah? It's sticking to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, don't bite hard on these. I kind oh. of have to chew these gently. Wow. Oh, that one's horrible. I've never had anything That's... so chewy, actually, in my life. Which one? That which one. one? Paradise Punch. I need to find a pink one. I've just had a grape soda. Hmm. What That's is the one that? I just had. That is not nice. What? <laughs> Let's try and find a banana one. No, I like pineapple. But not in a pizza. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit... I thought that was Paradise Punch, but it's not. That's strawberry banana, which is a bit bizarre. Yeah, pineapple banana is something that doesn't work together. Okay, so that's... <laughs> well, they're a bit dodge. Oh, that Paradise Punch is horrible. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I've got these to wash it down with. Oh. Yeah, can't so be the alternative of here is I've got a Star Mix one. Now, Bloody what's in hell, I never remember what's in the second Star Mix. Well, I'm not having any more of these. No, they're not. They're having pretty... said that, yeah. it'd be rude for me not to try watermelon. 
He's mm. like suppositories. <laughs> Actually, I reckon. Do you know? What? I reckon they're the um, they're the pills that they used to um, for the red and the blue pill mm. in uh, the Matrix. They certainly do that. I don't know if they do a blue one, but it's that's the type of visual car that I should have. You held yours up there, didn't you? I'm going to take I this mean, and see how far the rabbit hole, how deep the rabbit <laughs> hole goes. Well, apparently, Haribo have become chewier than I remember. But, oh, the Coke bottles are so good. I think we already got... know the result of this, don't we? Yeah. Oh, the Coke bottles are so good in Haribo. Oh, they're the best. Absolute, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they're the best. I'm not a massive fan of the, um, of the eggs, but that's probably about it. And the Star mm. Mix. Whereas there was about three of them that were horrible. <laughs> and yes, I've just popped in a ring, so. Mm. Oh. So I think that's, what's wow. that? That's 1-1 that's, that's one, one now. Mm. I'm still chewing them. <laughs> I tried a watermelon. <laughs> Flavour-wise, actually, that wasn't bad. A bit artificial, but. <laughs> this is insane. Peach, be Ooh, peach berry. No, I can't do it. They're too chewy. <laughs> I'll have to. I'll save those for later. You have to get. Wow. Um, <clears throat> you have to get your um, your other half and and your daughter. What what will they think of it? Try a challenge. How many of those yeah. can you eat at once? Oh, then that's a thing, isn't it? Right. Where you stick as many as you can in and see yeah. see how many you can do. I'm pretty sure that's a friend scene as well that they do it with the Oreos where they come in and it's like Joey put in sixteen Oreos yeah. in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that. No. But what's that? Does that even the score? One one then? Harry one, Bow one. on that one? Yeah, yeah. De oh, definitely. Yeah. Ding ding, ding ding. <laughs> right. The moment of truth. Do you do you, have you got one 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 or nine 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 prepared for me, Jerry? I've got. Um, I've got the emergency. In fact, I've got the paramedic. <laughs> that's about two minutes up the road from you. On speed dial. Oh, I'm not so sure about this one. Dom, I'm actually nervous for you. <laughs> it is. It's proper moist. This Twinkie. <laughs> there is no other word to describe <laughs> it. Like you've got like this. For those that can, that can't see, it's like, it's like some kind of. It's kind of cakey. It's a cake bar. It's the best way I can describe it. But it, it must have some kind of cream filling, which makes me nervous because the box says don't stick it in the fridge. And yet it's got some kind of cream feeling, which you would sort of say that should surely be in the fridge. I don't think I've ever come across a product where it, it, you've got don't put it in the fridge on the label. That's a bit or bizarre. It, it, it says store in a cool, dry place. So that suggests a cupboard. It doesn't specifically say put it in the fridge. But it's got a cream filling which means what preservatives are in this cream filling to keep it from going off you are one molecule away from pure plastic do i need to eat all of this no <laughs> hell no let me take i'll take a reasonable bite but i'm i'm a, I'm a bit nervous about this one <laughs> right i'm eating this twinkie I think your facial expression says it all. Uh, well, I'll be honest. It's not totally disgusting because it has no flavour. It doesn't taste of anything. But it is tacky. Like to eat. You know, when you kind of... You go to swallow... I, I can't believe something that's so moist could dry up my mouth so much when I'm trying to swallow it. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. That's odd. Have you got the ingredients that's really there odd for Twinkie? Unfortunately, I left a box over the other side of the room. I can go and get it if we, if we want to. I'll just have to shout from the other side of the oh, room. I'm going to have do a that, look at you online. That's weird. That's Not like what you're tacky... expecting at all. Well, I I don't really know what I was expecting. Everyone had sort of told me that they're not the nicest things ever. I can't... 
I can't see that just how is that and a really popular American snack it's it's moist and yet and yet really drying <laughs> I, the only the only time I have this sensation is if I eat really bad or it, it's like cold mashed potato that kind oh. of exactly that's the best way I can describe it okay I took a big chunk but do you want me to read out the ingredients for you? Yeah, while I eat another bite, just to, <clears throat> just to make sure. You're going to like this. Mm. Bleached enriched wheat flour, <laughs> which consists Not any more of, that. of wheat flour, niacin, ferrous sulfate, thiamine mononitrate, riboflavin, folic... That sounds like dynamite. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Folic acid, sugar, which you just kind of say, oh, that sounds normal. Corn syrup, high fructose oh. corn syrup, animal and vegetable shortening. I don't even know what that means. Tallow hydrogenated, tallow, cottonseed oil, mono and diglycerides, polysorbate 60. That doesn't sound good. Anything that's got a number in it, you know that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Soy lectin, eggs, water, dextrose contains 2% or less, calcium carbonate, calcium sulfate, agar, whatever that is, disodium phosphate. <clears throat> I don't like the sound of this, Dom, but I'm just going to read it. Locust bean gum. <clears throat> I kid you not. Modified cornstarch, corn syrup, solids. Soy lecithin, sodium acid, pyrophosphate, baking soda, cornstarch, monocalcium phosphate, whey, glycerin, salt, cellulose gum. So glycerin isn't dynamite. <laughs> seriously, so sodium steroil, lacid, lactylate, sorbic acid, and potassium sorbate to retain freshness. Apparently, and in, in brackets, xanthan gum. What the only. Oh, I know what's that. Ba barley is. malt extract, corn grits, natural and artificial flavours, enzymes, yellow five, red forty. <laughs> that sounds like a calling <laughs> sign. Come in, yellow five. That's a big ten four rubber ducky. That's a Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll read out the ingredients of the alternative. So it's uh glucose fructose syrup, dark chocolate. Uh, which is sugar, cocoa, mass, vegetable fat, um, butter, oil, cocoa butter, emulsifiers, uh, sugar, flour, whole egg, water, dextrose, concentrated orange juice, glucose syrup, vegetable oils, uh, hum humectant, gelling agent, acid, raising agents, which is um, ammonium bicarbonate, dis the sodium disphosphate, sodium bicarbonate, dried hold egg, acidity regulator, uh, natural orange flavoring, color, curcumin, emulsifier, and soy le 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 So, like, half the ingredients, and do you know what the, well, you know what the ingredients are that I've just read out, are for. These beauties. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. know. Of so, some of those ingredients, actually, I don't really know what they are. But yeah, I know what, what it makes up, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Makes up one of these beauties. <laughs> these are the most dangerous things. So they are Jaffa Cakes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. That's a win for the Jaffa Cake every time. Ding, ding. 2-1. In fact, name a better snack than the Jaffa Cake. Double stuffed Oreo. So, for example, double <laughs> double stuffed Oreo versus the Jaffa Cakes. Which one would you put it? At? Which would you say? I'd still go double stuffed Oreo. I think that's how much oh, I like. Really? Them. Yeah, it's your fault. You introduced me to them. <laughs> it's got to be uh, the Jaffa Cake. That Jaffa Cake is so good. <laughs> Jaffa Cakes are good. Yeah. Do you know who does a very good version of the Jaffa Cake as well? Is Marks and Spencer's. Oh, okay. Marks and Spencer's own. Yes. They're amazing. 
Mark Suspenses uh I do make a good and and they so Jaffa cakes are amazing for squad trips or taekwondo trips because they're you know if you're running low on energy I'm you know, just piling a couple of Jaffa cakes off you go there you go you can spa the nine thousand full <laughs> this is Sparta mode <laughs> kick somebody through the hole <laughs> just as you do. So that that's two one to the UK, I think at that point, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Right, the next one: pop tarts versus. I've I've put Mr. Kipling jam tarts. I'm not going to lie; I couldn't find Mr. Kipling jam tarts, so I had to go with um, Asta's that, own. Do. Um, that'll do, Donkey. That'll, that'll do. do. Um, I don't know if I want to read out those ingredients because there's quite a few of them there. Oh my. Yeah, I know we'll be here all night. Be here all night. Um, what's interesting, I didn't realise this. Apparently, Pop Tarts need toasting. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I am going to step away from the keyboard, but I did do a full Blue Peter moment. Um, I'm going to read the instructions on what it says to do. So here is a Pop Tart for those that are watching. Um, Pop tart warming instructions: Remove pastry from pouch. <laughs> Drop pastry vertically into toaster. <laughs> Emphasis on vertically. <laughs> Attend toaster while heating. Children should be supervised. As really? Beyond that. Note. It says that, does it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm reading this out word for word. <laughs> Note: Use lowest heat setting. A toaster doesn't have a heat setting. A toaster has a timer. <laughs> no, it has heat settings. No, my my toaster has a timer. All oh, right, well, I, doesn't your your toaster's a bit of a. When you do like the one two three four. On the toaster, yeah, that isn't a heat setting. That's a timer. No, that's to- how long the toaster goes. No, the toaster we've got's got a heat setting. Oh, mm. Mister Fancy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I do quite like my toaster, to be fair. Uh, Pop tarts are pre cooked and require warming only. Interesting. Pastry may may be too hot to handle. <laughs> That's legitimate what it says. Pastry may be too hot to handle. Allow to cool briefly before removing from the toaster. And then in capital letters, do not heat in microwave. Okay. So, um. Yeah, now I've prepared. I'm going to step away so my voice is going to become quite distant <laughs> on the podcast. But my house toaster is on the lowest setting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hang on. I forgot to turn the plug on. <laughs> so, in a minute. Either my entire house is going to burn down, or I'm going to have a pot. Well, you, you, for the first time. You're failing in the instructions. You're not supervising it. I can see. <laughs> it's too far away. You're not going to be able to do anything in time, too Dom. Far away. Have you ever had a pop tart? I have, and I don't like them. Okay. Do you remember what flavour you had? Blueberry. Yeah, I've got. Frosted strawberry sensation. So first of all, the Twinkie. Now this. Yeah, I know. I'm gone full American here with the, some of the breakfasts. This is the thing. A lot of this is like breakfast. Is like this is what I have. So I'm just going to hold up while the other one's cooking. The one that I broke, which I now probably can't put in the toaster. Ooh, bright light. Yeah, it does not, looks. A, the, the, it looks. Looks. The only way I can describe it is it looks like a very anemic pastry. It, it does, and they. I find them a weird consistency. They're very dry, and I don't like them. Oh. And artificial. The one, oh. the blueberry one I had is just artificial tasting. It was. It was. Um, yeah, a bit of a shocker. Yeah. So is that going to be a jam tart for you for the win? For me, definitely. It would be interesting to see what... But you said you didn't like jam tarts, did you? No, but if I had to choose between a Pop-Tart and jam tart, it would be jam tart. Uh, okay. Death by jam 
that in total it's cool. <laughs> I shall follow instructions. Well, at least the instructions are accurate. <laughs> this has been a bit of a different podcast. This is excellent. We're breaking uh, new boundaries. This this idea is 100% stolen from Lad Bible. Um, but I decided they normally get the... Uh, the um, like. So if they've got one person, they'd do British versus wherever that person is from. So quite often they'll have okay. Americans or things like that. Um, but they did like a Scottish versus uh, USA one, which was, I, think, I can't remember who the, the Scottish actor was, but the USA person was Will Smith. And one of the comparisons that they did on, on Snack Wars, as it's called, uh, they did jelly deals versus a Philadelphia cheesesteak. <laughs> And I'm thinking, <laughs> like, even, even, like, if somebody offered me something like haggis from Scotland versus a Philadelphia cheesesteak, it's like, yeah, I'm not a moron. Like, I'd, I'll take death by cheese over death by sheep guts, if I'm totally you honest. Know what? I quite like haggis. I have never had it, if I'm totally it's, honest. It's actually very nice. Is it one of those things that it's only horrible because you know what it is? I think so. If, if somebody was to give that to you and say, oh, it's just mincemeat, you'd eat it and say, mm. oh, it's really nice. It's like black pudding. I like black pudding. but I like right, black pudding. I, I love, love black, black pudding. pudding. But it, I think a lot of people are put off by it because they think, oh, it's just a blood cake. <laughs> yeah, I don't even really think yeah. what it is. Yeah. My dad likes um, blood pudding, uh, black pudding sandwiches. Yeah, lovely. Hmm. No, jam tart good. Although that one's a bit dry. Oh, that's very dry. Is that apricot though? Mm. Pastry perhaps not as good as perhaps Mr. Kipling. The jam. That's great. Right, let's see if this pops up. That's still really hot. Ow, that's really hot. Cool in the toaster, they said. Right, here we go. Good luck, Tom. Oh, I see what you mean by dry. Yeah. Holy moly. I mean, I'll be honest, it tastes exactly how it looks. It tastes like anemic pastry. Yeah, it, it's weird no pastry word, as well. It... For something with such bright sprinkles and colours... Mm. No. No. That's disappointing. I was hoping that might have been like another American win, but no. no. You see, I've I've had pop tarts before. I had a feeling that you weren't going to like them. <laughs> no. <laughs> How do you eat that for breakfast? You don't. No sensible person does. Americans, man, you're so weird. I want to. I want to appeal to a diverse culture. Ah, oh, you're so weird, Americans. Can't understand it. That makes no sense. I mean, this is coming from a man who has Cheerios for his breakfast, but no. Your yeah, Cheerios are okay. Mm. Your pop tarts are weird. I think that's an acquired taste. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not so sure on that one. Not so sure on that one. That's another win for UK. So that's that. that's three one. Another win for UK. Is that three one? It's three one. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> right, the final one then. So something. I, I realise I put this in the wrong order. I should have probably done these first. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. You do, do savoury <laughs> then to sweet. Yeah, you've done it in the wrong order. But, but first of all, <clears throat> look at the size of these bags. Nice. This is a massive nice bag. Nice and spicy. And it's full. There you go. That That's a win already, isn't it? Surely. You don't even need mm. to open the pack. Well, I don't... I'm like... I'm really torn. It's like... So, knickknacks or Doritos. Those are the two that I've got. Now, these aren't open, so... Um, I know what both of these taste like, so I'm not going to open these and eat these now, because that'd be too noisy. So for me, it's an easy one between those two. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. it is. Go on then. Nick Max. Okay. Okay. They're probably not as versatile as Doritos because you can't really dip knickknacks mm. in guacamole. You probably could, but it's not the same as mm. Doritos. So that no, no, I agree with they're you. They're not that. as versatile, but if we're doing this purely on flavour, and if I had to just choose one pack, I would choose the knickknacks. Interesting. It, interestingly, I've I, I noticed weirdly. Um, that the knickknacks give me a really bad stomach ache, um, but that's probably because they're full of gluten, wheat, and barley and all that oh, okay. crumb. Yeah. Whereas the Doritos are not listed as gluten free, but none of the ingredients contain gluten. It just has a message underneath that says uh, something along the lines of "made in a place where gluten is handled, so can't be guaranteed. You know, can't be guaranteed to be gluten free." Okay. And no issues when eating the Doritos. Um, but flavor wise and i'm gutted because i could only find i had to buy a box specifically of knickknacks from amazon to find these i couldn't find them in any yeah, shop yeah it's weird they don't tes- they they have Those, it listed on they, tesco's but it, but you can't buy them yeah always out of yeah. stock the same with the asda ones which is why i've got so i've got a massive box so i can send some over <laughs> to Jerry because i've got a bag send them and over the bags even. the bags are like so, normally you get a 25 gram pa- bag but these are 75 grand back. And it even says on the back, serves three people. I oh, know, totally weird. What? What rubbish? Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, I'm really torn. Um, this is also going to sound weird. What I did discover, though, eating knickknacks with chopsticks. <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> what? Why? Because I couldn't stand the the dust on knickknacks. Ah. It's really sticky. Couldn't you wear gloves? I thought about it, but I didn't have any gloves that were appropriate. And they were all like cotton gloves. I was like, mm, I'm just what gonna a- get cotton fibers on my knickknacks instead. What about satin gloves that go up to your elbow? Very elegant. <laughs> I'd look fabulous, wouldn't I? You would. <laughs> I would look fabulous. You need to eat eat knickknacks, but from a cigarette holder, <laughs> wearing a a, <laughs> a satin glove that goes up to the elbow. It's the most. Do I also need the long stick that holds the cigarette yeah, that's, at the that's end the one. as well? Yeah, I yeah. Never you understood. need that long with a knickknack on the end of it. And you just go oh, <laughs> knickknack on the end. <laughs> <laughs> with a long glove. Got to have that long satin glove, oh. otherwise it's not the same. Love to have the long satin glove. Yeah, I think that's that's a no for me. But yeah, so so come on then, Dom. Which what, I, you said it's difficult. It's not an easy one. It's not an easy one. This is the hardest one by far. Um, I'm gonna go with the knickknacks if I could get the ribbon saucy <laughs> ones rather than the nice and spicy ones. Didn't they have ribbon saucy? No, I couldn't find ribbon saucy. Could only find nice oh, and spicy. They're both good though. Both good, but rib and saucy, hands down, win for me. Um, Doritos for me are only good if you've got sauce. So whether that's salsa or not a fan of sour cream, but quite like a bit of guacamole and things like that with it. Um, I can hear Laura now going, but you don't like avocado. <laughs> um, I don't. But I do like guacamole on my Doritos. So it is what it is. It is what it is. So what's that? Uh, so that's I, d- I didn't know which one to count. They would feel like they they were both quite Britishy. I'm not sure. The Doritos are quite. We got so used to Doritos, but I think definitely. Doritos are probably American. Yeah. Interestingly, I don't know who makes who makes knickknacks. Doesn't say, but it says on the back. Uh, have you tried our other great snack brands? And I want your opinion on these. Um, so you've got Disco's. Oh, I like Disco's. I don't yeah, know I love the... Disco's. Um, the third one is Wheat Crunchies. Mm. Which I always remember being kind of a bit of a dead crisp. And then Skips. Yeah, Skips are d- difficult for me. Skips taste like... 
Well, they're floaty, they're floaty crisps. crisps, and you use them when you're packaging up a parcel or something. If you've sold something on eBay and you mm. you want to protect the item, you surround it by skips. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> is. It's nicely flavored packaging yeah. peanuts. Yeah, That's exactly. what skips are. <laughs> um, because prawn cocktail is probably one of the best flavors. Yeah, <laughs> but they're floaty. I don't like floaty. Like quavers, quavers are very floaty as well. Quavers, quavers are. I cannot. So quavers, quavers are way worse than skips because quavers are like this horrible cheese flavored and floaty cheese, <laughs> and it, it it's it's got the same tang as foot cheese. It's just not oh. pleasant. Exactly. That's exactly what I mean. Oh. So floaty cheesy crisps. No, it cannot stand quavers. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat quavers again now after that <laughs> you've planted that in my head i've ruined quavers i've ruined quavers for you <laughs> oh dear right should we go on to the other Let's battles then we'll stop eating food Let's we'll stop eating food so uh question one we've got battle of the household items uh which is which is always going to be interesting um one of the i've just oh, i've picked up that up. i've got food in front of me so i'll be careful this pick um now, there's a couple of things that we've put on here, and I added one I uh, earlier today, um, which I, I'm quite interested in. Quite tr- well, they're all interesting. The one, the main one, I think, is the second one. I want to start with the second one, which is just a slinky versus everything. Um, and it, it's purely so I can tell my joke later on, which is, which is good. Um, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> I don't know where to start with it. Slinky is a slinky. It doesn't even go downstairs properly. I've never come across a slinky that can flawlessly go down each step. Right. <laughs> so I don't even know what purpose the slinky serves. It's like a hula hoop, you know, like a toy hula hoop. The big, you know. Mm. Yeah, it, it's just one of those pointless toys. So <laughs> pointless so toys. Slinky versus everything. You know, yeah. everything. Yeah, everything. I think everything has it for me. Yeah, everything has it. Fair enough. It's always the um I always get fascinated by the people that use the slinkies and you see them and they're kind of doing this kind of backwards in the motion and and they're flicking it around. Have a there's different things. Um I'll tell my slinky joke. What does um what does Donald Trump and a and a uh, a slinky have in common? Don't know. They're fairly useless, but they're pretty good fun watching them fall downstairs. <sighs> Small hands. <laughs> Small hands. <laughs> but there you go. There's my slinky joke. I like for it the, for the for the month. And very topical. It's good. And the, what what I lo- do? You know what I really like about that is you could swap it out for any annoying person. Yeah, insert name here. <laughs> Doesn't have to Donald. Yeah. yeah. Insert name here. I just chose the first one that came to my head. Fair enough. <laughs> Which I thought was very topical. Uh, okay, we'll go on to the first I like, one. Like, uh, Mark sorry, versus can I just Bruce. Say, it does crack me up. That sorry, you put that in there because you wanted that neat segue into the joke. But yes, you know yes. that everything's going to win. Slink, there's no way Slinky's yeah. going to win. What is Slinky going to win at? Nothing. Everything's going to win. <laughs> yeah, it was just like just, that's yeah. the point. I wanted that discussion, and then I could tell Fair my enough. joke. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm. Uh, it, there's always this way you know you hear you hear it on other po- i hear it on other podcasts and sometimes they'll be like right i've got this nice they'll they'll segue into it really nicely and other times they'll be like you you know the, the one i particularly watch the what's good podcast they'll sometimes go you know one of them will start sort of talking about something and the other one will be like what's he going on about and then they'll be like you ruined my segue i had a really good segue oh i understand your segue i couldn't be asked with that i just went i want to tell my joke and, and it's better that way you know you're not pretentious yeah. about it you're just like I'm unashamedly <laughs> putting this in because I want to tell my joke. Fair play to you. Exactly. <laughs> Who says I don't do some small... This, this is things. your party, Dom, and you can cry if you want to. Well, yeah, and I can make but other yeah. people laugh. Uh, the mop versus broom. I think the mop... Mm. Yeah, because you can wet the... I don't even know what you call them. The tendrils? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mop. 
Yeah, what is it? What I, is the I, end I, of a mop called? No idea. But you can wet them. Yeah. Now you know you could you could you dip a nice... mop into acid, and fight somebody mm. with that. If you if you happen to just yeah. get the mop in there, <laughs> graze their arm yeah. with it, or get it in their face, that it's game over. <laughs> so a mop like a a brush or a broom is kind of something I'd see like just being a prop, but a mop I could see someone like John Wick picking up and yeah. using to yeah, great exactly. effect. You, you know, there's gonna be some there's gonna be a, a whack with the the handle. There's gonna be a wrap with the and the strangle with the with the, the tendrils. Tendrils. Yeah. Quite like that word. <laughs> tendrils. We're gonna get we are in comments. We're gonna get um, destroyed for this. <laughs> uh <laughs> I can already hear my mother now. <laughs> <laughs> it's called this. I did not raise you to be like this. Oh, no one knows. I defy anyone to tell me right now. Don't look it up. <laughs> tell me right now on the spot. What's the end of a mop Oh, my mum would really? know. I'm going to have to Google this yeah, now. She'll know. Um, yeah, there's going to be some like wrapping, strangling, <laughs> using it to disarm. And then there's going to be a nice bit where he dunks it in a bottle, bucket of water, and there'll be a nice thwack. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, very much more versatile. What versus broom? 100%. 100%. 100%. Look at this. Somebody's actually asked this question on Google. Of course they have. Is it a Quora question? No, it's. Well, because it's essentially basic parts. So the mop head, including a frame. Mechanical attachment linking the head and the handle, and the handle. So it's just a mop head. head. I prefer tendrils. (laughs) Hashtag just saying. (laughs) Hashtag (laughs) tendrils. That is the best thing I've heard all week. (laughs) Oh man. Um, frying pan versus rolling pin. (laughs) I don't. I mean, I, I'm going based upon all of the video games that I've done. They always put a frying pan yeah. in as like the joke weapon. Yeah, but... And it's usually quite effective. It is effective. So it's effective both in offense and defense. So you can use it as a shield. Mm, yeah. I didn't think of that. Mm. So it's a frying pan. It makes a better noise as well. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Gets that... Yeah. And, and you've got a bigger surface like, area. So you have more chance of hitting somebody with it and more chance mm. of blocking somebody... So yeah. if, if if somebody was to say choose your weapon in a fight in a cage fight, I would go for mm. frying pan. Yeah, because somebody goes well. to lunge at you with the the rolling pin, you block it with your frying pan. It's heavy enough to possibly even knock the rolling pin out of their hand, and then thwack mm. right in the face <laughs> before you grab your. And you get a good noise as well get... for additional comedy exactly. effect. And then when the person's on the floor, you get your mop. <laughs> Dip it into the antiseptic water and thwack with the tendrils. Thwack with, with the mop, with the mop tendrils. tendrils. Game we over. We are renaming mops yeah. to have that now, by the way. Absolutely. Um, and the last one that I put in was uh, Hoover versus an ironing board. <laughs> Which... So... I just... Ironing board, again, for the for the based on the same principles as the frying pan however you have added a note in here about change for robotic hoovers yeah you know the ones yeah. that kind of a yes. Roomba I think they're yes. called aren't so they? those ones could that that's kind of like rise of the machines isn't it mm. yeah that's kind of robot wars-esque yes. Well, I think it's one stage further. So, oh, thank you so much. This is brilliant. I can't believe you got me a robotic Hoover. And, oh, it's made by oh, Cyberdyne Systems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's got little red eyes that light up. And then next thing you know, <laughs> this this thing, I didn't, I... <laughs> this thing is just like in your bedroom. It sucks up one corner of your duvet. Then manages to get a bit of your foot. Next thing you know, you're being attacked by this robotic Hoover, and game over. That's it. 
Interesting. When you said red eyes, the first thing I thought of was the oh, Night Rider. Rider. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I'd turn up. I don't know why. More sinister. A lot more sinister than Kit. Is it Kit? Shh. Yeah. Yeah, Kit was the name of the... Uh, was it a Pontiac? It was Pontiac. Um, did you know this? And I didn't know this until I was kind of looking at them. Not only can you get robotic hoovers, you can get robotic lawnmowers. Yes. Can you yeah. imagine having a robotic lawnmower with like a spinning... At work, the the name of the company, that, which will remain nameless, <laughs> where I sat overlooking, the, there's a there's a big bit of lawn in front of the building, and mm. they were testing out a robotic um, lawn mowers. Yeah, it's quite fascinating oh, to watch. I, so I ain't going to... The- I am not going to that, that uh, office anytime soon. Not in the summer, long. anyway. I, I wouldn't do that in the summer. <laughs> Need to avoid that office. <clears throat> That's good. Oh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Question two. Battle of the movie trilogies. I think we'll... I mean, we can just hopefully just rattle really through sorry. these fairly really quickly. Sorry. Just before we do that, though. So, robotic Hoover yeah. versus a robotic... Lawnmower. Lawnmower. Robotic lawnmower Ooh. all the way. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think that's yeah. quite clear. Pardon the pun, but I think it's quite clear cut. cut. Oh. oh, that's awful. <laughs> I can hear Swanny now. As well. <laughs> I'm here all week. <laughs> I'm here all week. That's the best thing <laughs> that I've heard today. That's genius. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Sorry. Yeah, Battle of the Movie Trilogies. <laughs> <laughs> we are on for a very long podcast, the rate we're going. Um, <laughs> um, we'll rattle through these fairly quickly, but we might mix and match a few of them. And we've got some more in-depth ones later on, I think, which is going to be pretty good. So we've gone for uh, Lord of the Rings Lord versus the, Rings. the Hobbit. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Matrix versus Born. Matrix. <laughs> oh, Dom. No. No, I thought this so, was, when I was so, reading through this list, I thought there's, that's not even going to be up for debate. You're having a laugh. So, if it was just Matrix 1, hands down the Matrix. What? But because Matrix 3 is such a letdown, it's it, it it's it's still the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, but ma- <laughs> still... You d- that first Matrix is it's so, so perfect. perfect. The, so the, so it counteracts yeah. all. Even if they did ten yeah. Bourne movies, I think I think the mat- that first Matrix in you know nineteen ninety nine that was such a pivotal moment in cinematic history that everything after it's influenced. And I mean, the Bourne films were very influenced by the Matrix. It's very clear to see. Kind of have to give it to the Matrix. It's just not quite as clear cut as like Lord of the Rings. The no. No, but the fact that you hesitated, I, I get why you hesitate. I get mm. it because you've just explained. But yeah. no, for me, it's there's no hesitation. Yeah. You don't even have to count the other yeah. Matrix. Just just the original Matrix, as you say, 1999 version. The original Matrix mm. beats everything. Just beats everything, hands down. Yeah, yeah, just beats everything. Uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man versus Back to the Future. Back to the Future for me. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm t- again. I'm torn. It was just based on one and two, Tobey Maguire, but because of that, number three, potentially Back to the Future. You see, Back to the Future two with yeah. the hoverboard, mm. the DeLorean where he's putting in the banana skins and things. The the two yeah. ties. Look, for goodness' sake, the Nike trainers. That's that self-lace. self-lace. I mean, come on. Nice. Yeah. The holographic yeah. shark uh, that comes out of the. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Back to the future on that one. Dark Knight trilogy versus John now Wick. This. And Dark Knight being yes. um, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. This is difficult. This is tough because I absolutely love both. Mm. I I actually don't know if I could choose to be honest 
for, I mean, when, when I consider these, I'm not like going, this one's good and this one's terrible. This is more like, this one's like one and this one's like 1.1. 1. Yeah, 1. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, in terms of like yeah. scale. But, but, he, but the, scale. for me, there are so many, so many good things about both. Ah, oh, that's mm. really difficult. I don't think I could choose because you, know, you don't watch John Wick for the acting, right? No, but it's you it's, watch you watch it for. It's a groundbreak. They've taken a genre and they've just taken it to the next level, and it's fantastic the way they've yeah. done it. But then you take Dark Knight. I mean, the acting in it, oh, right? Yeah. So, uh, num- so it's next level, and I think. Okay, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call it. Because of Heath Ledger, in yeah. his memory, I'm going to go for Dark mm. Knight. Yeah, I think the yeah. Dark Knight trilogy that that wins it, like that Christian Bale, yeah. like the full thing. I think all of them. Yeah, definitely. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean versus the Ice Cream and Blood. So the Ice Cream and Blood um, trilogy is uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. This is no brainer for me. Ice Cream and Blood. Ice Cream and Blood. Although they are the two best quotable sections, and with current news going on, I've I've wa- rewatched the Pirates of the Caribbean recently. Um, uh, one of my phrases, one of the phrases that I absolutely love is, "Did you see that?" Because I will not be doing that again. <laughs> and I absolutely love the scene where he's going, oh, "I've got a jar of dirt." <laughs> so, um, yeah apps that they are they are top-notch quotable are. films um as we will go into later <laughs> on um indiana jones versus star wars star wars, star wars. uh the original yes star wars. not the prequels I'm, I'm comparing the two basically the, t- the two basically trilogies of george lucas basically yeah. episode four five and six new hope and six yeah empire jedi yeah and um raiders of the lost ark uh god i can't remember all three of them indiana jones last crusade and temple of i know the um i know the adult the adult film title version of indiana jones (laughs) what's that so it's um (laughs) it's so ridiculous i don't know where (laughs) how they come up with these things so it's in diana Jones and the okay. Temple of Poon. <laughs> it's, that's a shocker, isn't it? That's a shocker. It's almost. You're gonna have to bleep that. To <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna bleep that. <laughs> yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Temple of Doom, and the Last Crusade. Yeah, but Star Wars. Uh, yeah, Star but Star Wars. Wars. Star. Wars. The ori- those original three. Whew. And I didn't watch them when they came out originally. I would have loved to have been in the cinema in 1975 when that first one Dom, came out. I oh. watched the original in the cinema in mm. Ealing when it was released. I oh. almost soiled myself. Because as a I've as just... a five-year-old, it's, it's like, what what the actual hell? When when that scene when Darth Vader comes in, you know, they, they managed to, to hoover up the um, blockade runner. Yeah. And they yes. cut a hole in the door, and then Darth Vader comes through. The the, the, the smoke, smoke and, then, and then the red yeah. lightsaber as he just comes through. Literally, as a five year old, yeah. I was just sitting there thinking, "Okay, um, I want my mum. Oh, she's here, but I, I need I need something else to protect me. This is scary." Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then they did it so well in um, oh god, what was the spin off called? Um, Rogue One. Yes. Yes, the way that it connected, yes. seamless, oh, so and that's why good. I love that. I, so for me, Rogue One, uh, it's the original trilogy, Episode Four, Five, Six, mm-hmm. and then Rogue One. In in terms of how I'd rank them, okay, yep. and yeah. then yeah. yeah, best one of the three from the trilogy. Oh. This is this is always get so people. I've for years and years I've always said empire but mm. i must admit i love the the 
the ship scenes from Return of the Jedi. Mm, okay, okay. So I, I'm a big, big Empire fan. I love the fact that the story doesn't finish with a with a rebel victory, yeah, so to speak. Exactly. Kind of ends on like a mini cliffhanger, but it's but it's still satisfactory as a film on its own. Um, but some sometimes I there's a bit of filler I think at the beginning of A New Hope when you're introducing like uh, Ben yeah. Kenobi or yeah. Obi Wan as we find out later on. Um, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. I think I haven't, I haven't seen it. I mean, Jesus. Um, and when when you when you look back at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's it's a little bit of filler, but I do like the nostalgia. There, there's nothing beats kind of seeing chapter four kind of come up or episode four come up on that yellow on the yellow credits. Yeah, so uh, I, mean, I mean, just as a whole, they're excellent. Amazing. But yeah, I think I think it's still Empire still gets it just for Does me, it? just yeah, because it's got the spa, the starship because it's got space scenes, it's got vader being vader it's got all that but i do uh, and uh, yeah uh and it's kind of the iconic line that that everyone gets wrong yes. due to due to due to things so yeah um and the last trilogy we've got on here is die hard versus terminator so die hard for me because and I yes s- because die hard two and three were actually pretty good in terms of sequels yeah i i I'm impressed. I, I remember going to watch Die Hard 2 in the cinema and thinking, this is going to be a big letdown. Actually, I ended up really enjoying it. And then when Die Hard 3 came out, because it had Samuel L. Jackson in it, I thought, yeah, I've got to see this. Um, mm. And that was pretty iconic. Mm. Good film. Number two. Is number two the airplane yes. one? Yeah. 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 I... I it's like I really like number one of Die Hard and I really like number two but I didn't like number oh, three really? as much okay. yeah no I, I find it, uh, it it just was so different it was a bit too different okay. um, but then I don't really remember Terminator 3 off the top of my head but Terminator 2 again is another one of those films I wish I'd seen when it came out because that scene where it, go, where it goes through the bars is good by now, these standards. It is, and yeah. Like it's better it, than some of the CGI I've seen with these the Mercury, days. What I call Mercury Man. And whenever that actor mm, appears yeah, in anything, because he has appeared in other stuff, and my, my, every single time my wife yeah. goes, why do I recognise him? And I go, Melty Man. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's Melty <laughs> Man from Terminator. Um, I went to the cinema yeah. to watch that, and my, my friend had a bright idea of booking front row seats at the, I know, so I walked out of the cinema with bloodshot eyes and a stiff neck. <laughs> like, thanks for that. What a well, yeah. I bet. You always book you always book like sort of yeah, three quarters exactly. away. What the hell's he Yeah, no. You just got overexcited, booked the front row and yeah, that was a bloody disaster. <laughs> but a good film good film to watch at the cinema. Yeah. I'd like to point out, I think all of these, apart from maybe The Hobbit, are in like, are of my top trilogies. Yeah. I think. The yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question three Battle of the Movie Aliens. Uh, now, I only added one more, so we've got, we've got a couple of these, but I did like your, thir- <laughs> your third one. I thought that was very yeah. interesting. Uh, <laughs> took me a little while to decipher it, but, and, and also, I, it's like, it could happen. Yeah, it could. Like it could be done on screen. Could. It could be done. Could be done. So the first one you've got is a traditional alien versus predator. Um, I've got a confession. I've still not seen Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> so I don't actually know too much about oh, the alien. So Jerry's oh, currently crying. Dom. <laughs> Have you seen Con Air yet? <sighs> no. Well, pre- look, Predator's number one. You have to watch Predator. Okay. Honestly, no, everything. no. I mean, this is a non-negotiable. You have to watch Predator. I can't believe you haven't seen Predator. But then I haven't seen, I, I haven't seen Alien or Aliens either. What? Oh, Dom. Forget- no. Right. Predator first. So if you want quotable lines, Predator's got them. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot of the quotable lines from Predator. I ain't got time um, to bleed. Or I just know a little. <laughs> no, it's it's not. What's the one where he? What's the one where he puts the um, he puts him into the pipe, 
And it was Steam, and it goes, let off Steam, Bennett. What oh, that? that's... um. Oh, no, that's Total Recall, isn't it? Total Recall? Okay, that's Recall. Okay. That's with Johnny Cab. <laughs> Johnny Cab. <laughs> yeah. It could be that one. It could be that one. Yeah, he picks up Bennett. Or is it... um? Commando. Is oh, it Commando? actually, it could be Commando. Let me let me Google it. Yeah. Let me let me ask trusty Google. <laughs> the joys of working the the joys of working at our computers and recording exactly. this podcast. The day that we do an in-person podcast, Jerry, we're going to be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> All our secrets are going to be are. revealed. Uh, we don't actually know what we're talking about. We've got a script written for us. <laughs> we paid some kid on Fiverr to let us do it. It's worth every penny. What was it, Bennett? Let off steam. There we go. Let off. Let, let off steam, let Bennett. Off Come steam. on. Oh, here we go. Let's off some steam. That's Commando. It's Commando, yeah. Commando. Commando. Let off some steam. Can't do it. That's a shocking so, impression. You're going to have to answer this Alien versus Predator I think Predator then, because I've seen Predator about a hundred times. It's an absolutely iconic film. Alien is amazing. I mean, Alien is a better made film. There's no doubt about it because it's, okay. it's Ridley Scott, isn't it? I think Alien. Yeah. Yes. It's a better made film, better storyline, pretty damn creepy, to be fair. Mm. But in terms of pure entertainment and quotable lines, you can't beat a bit of Predator. Oh, I love oh, a good quotable line. You can't line. beat Predator for some quotable lines. Oh, I do like a good <laughs> Predator. Uh, a good quote. <laughs> and Predator. Uh, and Predator. I don't know. I don't I just, know. Oh, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. <laughs> That's the thing, it hasn't. It's I a know. bank holiday week. It's been a it's short like, week. Ironic. Iconic. Ironic. I've only been working two days. Dom. <laughs> yeah, you've only worked two days. <laughs> right. Oh, <Good> my. <laughs> uh, E.T. versus Paul. Paul. Yeah. Paul. Yeah. Because he's, he's, he's cheeky. He's a bit, whoa, a bit way. And he smokes weed. And I think... <laughs> I think he'd run circles. Right? If he needed to do somebody <laughs> yeah. in, if he needed to do someone yeah, in, he would do, do it. it. <laughs> he'd do it. He'd do it. He's, he's a bit East um, End. He's a bit. He's a bit of a geezer. He's a bit of a geezer. He's a bit of a geezer. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> what I thought you would say. I like that. That's really good. Um, now this is the one that you've come up with. Do you want to introduce it? Um, yeah. So, the rancor from Return of the Jedi, which is that. That giant pet thing in that dungeon that um, Luke Skywalker ends up hurting quite badly and the Rancor's owner bursts out crying. The Rancor's owner, Jabba the Hutt. And then, and then you got the... Now, I don't know how this is pronounced. Is it Wampa? 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 Wampa Wamp- sounds a bit Wampa. dodgy. Wampa yeah. from Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Wampa sounds like something that you get in a comic book when something hits Wampa, you. Wampa, yeah. Wampa. Um, <laughs> bit of power. power. Wampa. <laughs> it's, it's very Batman, original 60s. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I imagined. Wampa. Wampa. Biff. So I, I think the Rancor. Because I think the Rancor's got a bit of a weight advantage. I think it's a lot bigger. Because the Wampa, I believe, is the first thing that he meets in Hoth, is. isn't it? And he cuts yes. off the arm yes. with the lightsaber. And the Rancor, I remember being significantly bigger. And the only way they got rid of it was uh, they dropped the gate on the head. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I remember. So I think it's going to have to be the Rancor from Return of the Jedi that wins that one. For me. Uh, And then the last movie aliens that I put in, Yoda versus... Yoda, all the way. Okay. Yoda lifted... Yeah. Yoda helps Luke Skywalker lift an X-wing out of a swamp. Yeah. What's Groot gonna yeah. do? Was... Have Have you seen the uh, prequel trilogy? Do you not remember the battle between Yoda and? Darth? Oh, well, I I can't do. Can yes. I? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Benefit fraud. Yeah. Benefit fraud. That was. That was Yoda <laughs> claiming benefits. Yeah, it was. <laughs> he comes in on a yeah, little walking stick. He's got his stick, blue badge. Drops the walking stick. Vroom, 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 Parks vroom, up vroom. in the, the disabled spot. And there's blue badge, blue badge holder. 
Everyone goes, oh, look at him. Bless him, Yoda. <laughs> but then he goes to town. Absolutely. Destroys him. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that would probably be a Yoda. Even even Groot is most powerful. Um, I think Yoda would I didn't mean to be that. politically incorrect, by the way, by what I was saying. <laughs> the views expressed are not my own when... No, not, not my, my own, own when it's when for it, pure comedy reasons. <laughs> when if it's slightly offensive, it's not it's my all right, own. You've got to be careful. It's all right. Somebody will just set Will Smith on you. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Give me a good slap. I'd like to see him try and slap me. I'll <laughs> kick him in the testicles. I, I'll get my mop. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, he'd get a swift... As soon as he goes to raise his arm like that, I'll, I'll give him a swift kick in the nuts. <laughs> and then I'll attack him with a mop. So I'd like to see. Yeah, I got your number, Smith. <laughs> oh dear uh, question four battle of the fantasy characters um, so I just plucked out a few out of thin air on this one uh, some really random ones so we've got the Harry Potter world versus like the Marvel yeah, so Avengers like have it Dumbledore versus you oh, reckon yeah. the total I think the Avengers, the Avengers have, it. have it yeah I suppose all the most of the wizards that they talked about in Harry Potter were te- technically teenagers still learning Look, how to do magic. Dom, by they? the time they start pull out, you know, where's my wand? Oh, flipping it. It's in this pocket. There's that pocket. <laughs> then you've got to go through all of the, you know, I don't know, bloody whatever they say, whatever spell. By the time they're even halfway through that spell, they're going to have their asses served to them on a plate. <laughs> There's no pissing about in here. This is like... Yeah. This is, pro- you know, Avengers are like street fighters compared to <laughs> compared to these kids. Um, even like I wrote down like Hermione versus Bruce Banner because I was like, but even on an intelligence level, I think that the, the Avengers would have it as well. Wouldn't yeah, they? they would. <laughs> and then if he gets fed up with it, he just turn into the Hulk and just lob her across yeah, exactly. the room. Exactly. You've seen that scene with the way he's he's throwing what's his face around like a like a mop. Loki. Loki. Like, a mop. like a mop tendril. <laughs> I will clean this bit and I will clean this bit. And I will clean this bit. <laughs> Puny car. Yeah, Avengers. Avengers yes. all the way. Yeah. Avengers would have it. Uh Lord of the Rings versus Star Wars characters. This is a bit more of a tricky one. Star Wars characters. Um I think I think it depends. Like I wrote a few examples. Like if you go like Gandalf versus Yoda, that's quite a tricky one. I think. No, I don't think it is. The Force versus Gandalf. Do, yeah, Gandalf do you know? doesn't have a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think weaponry <laughs> well, wise, I think, like I think advanced, like futuristic versus, like, you know, Middle Ages. Back to our kind of like dysentery and, <laughs> and chariots that we started off in podcast number okay, one. See, we, we that linked it all the way back to our very first podcast. That's the best segue yeah. I could do. Um, I think is a little bit unfair in terms of like, but in terms of like talent and skill, yeah, you can't separate. It's got to yeah, be Yoda. You can't separate really. Yoda from his his lightsaber. Lightsaber. So I then went the final one I think on that on that list. So I did the Aragon versus Luke, and I think again yeah, it's Luke. probably going to be Luke just purely yeah. due to weaponry. But the last one I've got is Frodo versus no, the Ewoks. One on one, even one on one, <laughs> even one on one. And if we change that to Samwise, it's still Ewoks because you still reckon yeah, them Ewoks. If you think of what the Ewoks have been through, they fought stormtroopers. They it's fought true. the Empire and won. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let their body hair and facial hair and their size and proportions fool you. Ah! <laughs> they went for it. They properly went for it. Dup, dup. Dup, dup. They defeated yeah. the Empire. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair, yeah, no, I, 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 I purely put it in because I, I wondered if one on one, maybe Samwise would no, have it. I, I think, no, I think what will happen is Samwise will go to grab 
one of the Ewoks, and the Ewoks will like slide under Samwise's feet and then just jump up onto his back and just get him around the neck and like, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> and it'll be game over. You yeah. will go to sleep. And think of the game spear over. as well. They've got spears. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Samwise, Samwise had a frying pan, though. <laughs> Bit of spear? Bit of spear. Doom. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, question five, perhaps a little bit more of an our serious kind of battle ofs, although later on it might dissolve into childish <laughs> humour later on because I went and had a look at some of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the person that we've got at the end. Um, so we've got here Battle of the F1 Drivers. Now I've put down kind of like the three main ones that people compare because I'm just curious to see if A, you had an opinion, but also like who you thought. Yeah. So um, you're a massive. I know you're so a massive got, F1 fan. I think you should go. I'm, I think I'm you should go massive. first, and then I'll I'll throw in my two pennies worth. So the first one is Hamilton Schumacher. Um, I'm biased. I'm British. I think Hamilton has it. He's got more wins, higher win percentage, and he did it without cheating. Ooh, cold blooded Schumacher. D- <laughs> Yeah, Schumacher did have that one year where he won it by, was it driving it, or he tried it against Eddie Irvine. No, not Eddie Irvine, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Gilles Villeneuve and Damon Hill. And one of them he succeeded and one he didn't. So, uh, yeah, for me, for me and for all the work that he does now, I'm a, I'm a big Hamilton fan. I'm a big So I, I yeah, I, I prefer, I prefer Hamilton as a, as a personality and as a driver, however, I think Schumacher was, he was a trailblazer. I think Schumacher achieved something way beyond mm. even what Ed and Senna could do. Ooh, wow. Yeah, there's always that um, discussion point, isn't there? And I watched the Schumacher documentary and they basically said that when Sh- or Martin Brundle says it he says when Schumacher turned up because they were all you know they just turned up and raced whereas Schumacher turned up and he was fit well so then he could drive the cars harder than they but could but Ayrton Senna did that he pioneered that he so he was the first driver to really take yeah. it seriously and for him it was a profession and he put his all into yes. it turned it into science i and uh, well we'll we'll come on to that in a second but but I think Schumacher, I mean, he was a machine. The guy is incredible mm. as a driver. Yeah, yeah, Be- he was. Because he was, he was I think uh, the reason why I choose Schumacher is because of the, 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 he was just operating at such a different level. Put the, put the, you're right about the, the, the attempts pushing the boundaries in terms of trying to win and some of the stuff that he did okay put Mm. that to one side he was head and shoulders above the others yeah whereas whereas hamilton is you know you've got very very good drivers and hamilton just happens to be that little bit better and and he is amazing but i don't think the gap is as big yeah i mean you look at like people like verstappen and um uh, Charles Leclerc and even Lando Norris, George Russell, those people, they're not that far that, behind exactly, Hamilton. Yeah. There is there is every now and then some Hamilton magic and like Brazil last year, twenty twenty one, there was some Hamilton magic on that. That 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 is that is when a driver goes out, you know, going from P twenty to P five in eighteen yeah, laps and then going from P ten to, to first in seventy two laps is just around a track that's not particularly easy and it you know there's there's other levels and there's other levels um we'll go to the third one i've spelled his name wrong which i'm really annoyed about I've just realized because you've already mentioned him but Ayrton senna um and prost i suppose is the next kind of generation down if yeah you go, if you kind of think about so it. both drivers i love both drivers um and but but i, I have to choose senna i he he was just yeah yeah, and, and his death was a magical, absolute tragedy. I mean, mm. any death in, in is a tragedy, and any death in 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 any sport is a tragedy. But there was there was something that about 
I just felt that Ayrton Senna had so much more to give. And, and yes, yeah, I, I was. I mean, that was a, a proper gut punch when he died. And what a yeah. way to go as well. I think I just think so needless. Yeah. Yeah, Imola, tw- which is where yeah. they are this weekend. Um, Ninety-three. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let me just check trusty Google. Uh, could be wrong on that. Ninety-four, San Marino. Ninety-four. Yeah, I thought it was Imola. I thought it was Imola. Oh no, it's uh, it was called the San Marino Grand Prix, but it's oh, okay. at, um. Yeah. Or the time it ends the dinner yeah. Ferrari in Italy, um, which is Imola. Um, yeah, it's it's in Imola, which is where they currently are at the moment. Um, <clears throat> uh, when he hit, yeah, hit the wall at 200 miles an hour. <clears throat> Back when they had nothing but concrete walls. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think Prost for me, he was yeah, great. Prost Don't get me wrong, amazing. Prost was really good, but. He was at his peak the yeah. whole time, and he had just peaked. Whereas I still think if Ayrton had, you know, was still alive, he would have gone on for a few more seasons. He, although he would have been fighting with Schumacher, he would have won a few more. I, I think. think he would have rattled Schumacher, <clears throat> and I think I think he would have given Schumacher a run for his money. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And then we go kind of to the original ones. So I've got um, Fangio, uh, who won. Four, I won't say four. I think he was the first four, or was he the two? Can't remember. Um, a five. five. No, he's five. Okay. Yeah, he won it five in the first decade that it kind of existed, <clears throat> and then against the arguably the best driver to never win a Formula World World Championship, which is Sir Sterling Moss. Um, that's really difficult. Again, my Britishness in me goes to Sterling Moss. Yeah, I'm going Moss. Legend, and some of st- and some yeah. of the stuff he did. But Fangio to win it five times. So, I think I might have to go. Okay, Moss, so how about this? Because I'm, I'm, I think I'm in exactly the same headspace as you with this. Heart says Moss. Head says Fangio. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Accurate to anything. But then we can now go on to like our f- well, let's say are controversial F1 drivers because we were discussing this earlier in the week and we and we were, I think what we've kind of come to conclusion is they're a bit media <laughs> puppet like yes, these days very much so as is a lot of athletes yeah to be fair yeah as we're not just picking on lot. on formula 1 drivers here you're right um they're all a bit bland sometimes if they were a food they would be a pop tart slash Twinkie. They would be. They would be a pop tart. I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> no, that's hideous, Dom. Seriously, it's just, look how thin it's it so is. It's so anemic. Well, I've never, for goodness I, sake. I know, but like, I, I never understood <laughs> how, how like something that looks like it should be sticky is not sticky, but also has no flavour. It's hideous. Oh, I don't know what that is. Um. Tell me your favourite F1 driver. Of all time. Mm. So I love, I absolutely love this guy. It's a personality. And I love the fact that he was a rogue. And he was WYSIWYG. What you <laughs> see is what you get. Eddie Irvine. Yeah. Eddie Irvine. Eddie Irvine. Fast Eddie. Uh, <laughs> he was the one that was like, He's he was always second fiddle to he people always, he, for a, a lot yeah, of his career. Always, which made his blood boil. He 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 just he was just a rebel. I think he was a rough diamond. Um I loved you know, every time I used to listen to him, you know, he's the only person I was really I used to hang off his every word when he used to do post race conferences and mm. yeah. He I love Eddie Irvine. Yeah. He's fantastic. I think one of the, the best bits for me is when he's in the press conference with uh, Schumacher's come first, he's come third, and Mika Hakkinen has come second, and Mika Hakkinen is answering a question, and Eddie Irvine just gets bored and <laughs> yeah, just throws a bucket yeah, of water, yeah. just throws the glass of water over him. That's that's Eddie. Yeah, that is Eddie. 
uh, and then he runs out of the press conference. So uh, you don't, I mean, you get it a little bit more these days, I think. There's there's a bit more flexibility. There's a lot more jokes. There's some real, some of the, some of the characters in F1 are hilarious. Some are a little bit dull. Um, but yeah, that you don't get that anymore. You don't get, you, you don't get those no. kinds of humor levels um, and silliness. Um, and you don't even really get that in the office these days. I've I've been in the off office while well, we were in the office, and we've had water pistol fights in a office full of like computers. It was great, <laughs> wasn't it? Um, yeah, M- many a story, many a story for a different yes. podcast or not for a podcast, so I don't lose my job. Exactly. But I did want to c- counter you, and what about in sort of and sort of say James Hunt. So, no. yeah, he was the original bad boy, wasn't he? So he's before my time. So I I, I haven't yeah. really got too much of a... I don't think I can, I'm can. i in a position to say too much about it. I've watched documentaries about Hunt and, and um, I watched mm. that film, which was really interesting. What was it called? Rush. Rush. Thank you. It's Hunt, it's Hunt mm-hmm. and um, Nicky Lauder. Yeah, who plays Nicky Lauder? What's He's his a name? good actor. He's a brilliant actor. Um, <sighs> oh God, I can't think of the name. But he plays. Um, he's in the Avengers. Is is in the Avengers as well? Yeah, he's a really good um, actor. Um, uh, you've got. Uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, Daniel uh, Daniel Bruhl. That's it, Daniel Bruhl. Yeah, 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 Bruhl. And who plays James Hunt? Yeah, uh, that's Chris Hemsworth. Well, there are about fifty Hemsworth, Hemsworth brothers, aren't there? I can never tell which one's which. <laughs> that's true. That is very true. Wow, I've just looked at the cast. That is a properly stacked yeah. cast. There's no messing around. Natalie Dormer, Olivia Wilde. Wow. That's a properly stacked cast. It's got that's got one of my favourite scenes in um in it when the when uh, Nicky Lauda drives the Ferrari up to the Ferrari mechanic and he's like, "What yeah. the fuck is this? It's a shit <laughs> yeah, box. No, no. You can't say that. It's a Ferrari. <laughs> it's a piece of shit." <laughs> yeah, one of the best. One of the best. Um, but we also because I also then wrote down like the, perhaps like two of the modern modern day like breakouts. Um, so you've got um, Nick Kyrgios, who's like that the tennis player, who's a bit more outlandish. Although I find sometimes it's just a bit rude. So it's probably a bit too far. Yeah, on the scale. I I read up. I had to read up about him because I don't really know who. I didn't know who he was really until you mentioned him. So I, I read up about and and I think mm. some of the stuff that he's done. Yeah, you just think, oh come on, that's. I think he's crossed the line. Yeah, for his on on court banter, you know you've crossed the line when John McEnroe says, "Yeah, you know what? You've crossed the line." <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm um, not so sure that he, you know. For me, he's. I don't know. There's there's being a bad boy. There's being controversial, and there's just being plain rude. Um. Yes. So I'll put him in. Yeah, that no, category. I hundred percent agree yeah. with that. And and uh, you have to pronounce the other person for so, me. So, now I want to say his, his whole name because I love his whole name. So let me just Google it because I, I always forget. Um, right. So his so there are four. Oh, he's got four names, but anyway, I'll I'll say the three that they keep they always use. So it's Miguel. And I'm probably going to get this horribly wrong. Miguel Angel Jimenez. The golfer. Spanish golfer. Miguel and Miguel Jimenez. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Because it's not. Miguel Angel. I think it's Angel. Yeah. And I don't I don't even know if you pronounce the G. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, yes. He's uh, Yamel and he's a Rodriguez he's as a well Rodriguez. because yes. in Spain Rodriguez, you have two right. names Miguel and Miguel Jimenez Rodriguez I mean what a cool name flipping egg yeah it's not like my crappy name but I, if I right do you know what I'm going to get my name changed by deed poll to <laughs> so what's your name Miguel <laughs> Jimenez 
What, as in the golfer? As in the golfer. Yeah. yeah. As what in the a golfer. legend. Is he, is he more outlandish? So I than... love this guy because he um, drinks wine, smokes cigars, and he has the <laughs> maddest stretching routine you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's like something from The Exorcist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you think, oh, he's doing a stretching routine, but any minute now his head's going to just like spin and he's going to vomit pea soup. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> But he is a legend. That's the way. That's the one way yeah. of describing it. But the, just legend. the fact that he he oh. he speaks his mind. He doesn't care. You know, he he was in some press conference. Something he was, he pointed down to his crotch and he said, "Yeah, no, down there, I'm you know, I'm I'm 58 years old, but down there, I'm still 21." Um, <laughs> he's, I think he's married like 50 times. I'm not. I'm not. By by the way, uh, saying that that's a good thing. I'm just saying that this guy just doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He doesn't yeah, give Yeah, he up. couldn't care less if he tried. That's public yeah. image. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love it. And, and, and you know, he's very open about it as well. He just says, yeah, I like wine. I will drink wine. I smoke cigars. I don't care what it does for my image. So so ba- basically what he's saying is I don't care what my sponsors think. I, this is me. Take, take, take me as I am and, yeah. and, and, and go there. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that would be. There are there are some people, athletes that I think take themselves. Yeah, too yeah, and he doesn't, you know. So he he's yeah, he's, he's that character. And the thing is, though, he's one of those larger than life characters, and he's got such a personality that you know you mention you mention this guy and you 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 Google him and you go, oh God, yeah, I see what's going on here. And mm. and who compares to him in terms of personality? Golfers are not the most charismatic they're like snooker players they're not the most no. charismatic you know but then you had like jimmy white i don't think i could name a single snooker player I think jimmy white was my jimmy the whirlwind and who's the guy is it o'sullivan is the one that's won it the most yeah it's ridiculous that, isn't he? but they're, they're very serious characters um, but there was another guy what's his name i've forgotten his name <sighs> he's a bit of a drinker and he was a bit of a rebel. I mean, it's like I always, I always find snooker's a bit like darts. You're not really good at the game unless you do drink. Well, well, yeah, I know it's like going to the pub and playing pool, and the more pints you have, the more accurate you are. It's not, it doesn't quite work yeah. like that. It's just a fact of life. It's just a fact of life. Everyone turns up to snooker. Yeah, all the best snooker players, all the world champions, have just basically been about fifteen times over the limit. They're pissed. <laughs> That's the secret. That's the only way I can play pool or snooker. I'm great after I've had about three shots. Bring it on. Come Take on everyone then. on. I'll use the pool yeah. girl as well. Come yeah. on if you think you're hard enough. You want some? You want some? Question six Battle of the Blood and Cornetto trilogy. So, so we've got to decide this. which one is the best. I, I don't know how to do this. This is going to be so hard. I'm just. If I've got something. Let me use this. Uh, like this pop tart and bash it against my head because that's going to be more <laughs> less painful to try and try. And... Uh, okay, well let, let let's go through them one by one. Let's go through it methodically. That's what that's what we're going to have to do. It's not going to be easy. I mean, so Sha- Shaun of the Dead is like the original. Um, it's probably the least quotable. Yes, I agree. From yeah. memory. It's a very good film. It's very funny. Um, and I, I, although it, I don't like the ending that much of it. Yeah, I struggled with the ending of that. I struggled with the ending of... Cause, so, so, spoiler, we'll go into the end. So obviously, his best mate turns into a zombie, basically. But he keeps him around. And I'm just not... I don't... It doesn't sit quite comfortably for me i don't know why i don't know why just it's just an unsettling it is ending, i it? agree but the film gave us the quiz it location did. name that we have for the last hundred yep. quizzes we've reached no, 101 yet. yet no not 101 yet no um and it's like the original it's like it's that it's, it's the that og pinnacle. it's so, the og but yeah it's the og for me so i think this is going to make it easier for you when I say this, mm. for me, Hot Fuzz. 
between between Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz is Hot Fuzz for me. Hot Fuzz. Yeah, yeah I mean, so Hot Fuzz is a it masterpiece. Is. I don't think I don't think there is a flaw in Hot Fuzz. Um, other than the bit where he gets the where he gets the uh, the model village through his the bottom of his yeah yeah uh, chin makes me um, well nearly makes me as you refer Ralph. to it Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's that um otherwise it's perfect it's so quotable nobody tells yeah. me nothing yeah my, um, that's the only thing and that... it's all right andy it's just bon and A's. because we just sat through two hours of so-called acting and that kiss was the only <laughs> thing that was fucking legitimate jog on just the greater good. It's the most perfect quotable film. There's no film that's more what quotable about the than skid that. Marks? Yeah, it's there skid are no skid marks. Um, it, it it is. So my only, and I agree with you. The the only thing I struggled with. So so it's funny how we're, we're both exactly the same on this. Shaun of the Dead. I didn't like the ending because that was unsettling. Mm. Like right at the very end. Yeah, it's just um, mm. and. Yeah, I actually I find I, I think the the level of gore in Hot Fuzz is a bit OTT. Mm. Just yeah. a little bit OTT, yeah. I think. Um I think they took it just know. a step too far. What was it? E-mine. But everything else is yeah, you can't fault it. E-mine. Can't it's 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 brilliant. Yeah, when Tim Messenger gets the top of the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 that, that yeah. does me in as well. Um so then you've got Shaun of the Dead versus The World's End. And now, I think based upon what we've said, it's been a very long time since I've watched The World's oh, End. World's End. Uh, That's I very quotable as well, Remem- Yeah, I haven't watched it enough to pick oh, up as many of the fantastic. quotes. I'd like to watch it more to pick up the quotes. I do, but I do love The World's End as well. I think between those two, I think The World's End yeah, has got to have World's it. End. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd like to go to the World's End pub. What is it that you're going to do? The, the Golden, Golden Mile, Mile or something like that? <laughs> the Golden Mile. Yeah. It's the... Um... Oh, I've got it on my phone. Because I'm going to have to say all the names of the pubs because I love it. Yeah, yeah. But, but in fact, I was actually planning a Golden Mile because there are enough pubs where I live to be able to do our own version of the Golden Mile. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, what? In um, what you call it? Yeah. So here we go. You've got the first post, the old familiar, mm-hmm. the famous cock, the cross hands, the good <laughs> companions, the trusty servant, the two-headed dog, the mermaid, the beehive, the king's head, the hole in the wall, and finally the world's end. We as a Brit- uh, as British, co- uh, you know, uh, as people who are British, we and half do a good g- give a oh, pub a good name, don't l- we? Yeah, the, the cock. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, so I, I was reading up about this. Apparently, there is a significance to each of those pub names mm. in relation to that mm. the storyline. Um, yeah, and and somebody's gone to the mm. trouble of explaining it. Yeah, which is there's a whole Wikipedia, um, a Wikipedia. Oh, I can't <laughs> oh is that film? Yeah, that's what got me. I didn't realise it was that old. Wow, I did not. No, not just that. wow, Dom. Wow. 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 Oh, Hot Fuzz. When did Hot Fuzz come out? When do you reckon? I think that was. Ooh, 2009? Uh, 07. Okay. So here's something interesting. IMDb rating. So World's End only gets a 6.9 compared to Hot Fuzz, which gets a 7.8. And Shaun of the Dead Mm. just pips it at 7.9. Is that... that is that uh, no? That's IMDb, though, isn't it? 
Oh, so that's users. Uh, yeah, that's users. So, I mean, I can kind of understand it that. It's a bit harsh on World's To a certain though. extent. I mean, World's End wasn't originally well received, if you know what I mean. I, I don't, don't know, know why. why. It's a... Because it's, it's a grower. Yeah. I think the film is. Because here we go. Here's one of my favourite lines. My so, it's, it's, that, it's the scene when, when they book into the B&B. And hmm. the lady says... The owner of the B&B says, oh, so would, will you be eating here tonight? And he says, no, tonight we will be partaking of a liquid repast as we wind our way up the Golden Mile. Commencing with an inaugural tankard in the first post, then on to the old familiar, the famous cock, the cross hands, the good companions, the trusty servant, the two-headed dog, the mermaid, the beehive, the king's head and the hole in the wall for a measure of the same, all before the last bittersweet pint in that most fateful terminus, the world's end. Leave a light on, good lady, for though we may return with a twinkle in our eyes, we will in truth be blind. Drunk. <laughs> yes. Love it. That is 100% the way to do it. 100% the way to do it. Love it. Oh, man. How is it? Like, there's a scene where he says, I'm allowed to swear, aren't I? Yeah. Why am I saying that? I swore like a sailor in the last episode. I don't know why. Um, you did swear like a sailor. It's one. when he says, well, what the fuck is WTF? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone keeps saying WTF. What the fuck is WTF? And then yeah. Matey comes out the toilet <laughs> cubicle and goes, what the fuck? And he goes, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I'm, I mean, I think for me, so Hot Fuzz does it for me. I think Hot, so if I'm going to go in order, Hot Fuzz, The World's End, Sean nice. of Death for me. Purely cause I th because Hot Fuzz just. So Hot Fuzz is a film that you can watch sober or drunk yeah. and it's great. And I know because I've done this. So I got home uh, uh, back to my flat um, with a kebab <laughs> from a night out back when I could used to be able to do it. I can't do that anymore. Um, and I sat down and I just turned on the television, right? Back when I just had a, when I had a television. So this is when I was sharing a flat with somebody. Um, and it was on, it's on that film four channel. And it literally was a scene where he's walking down the, um, down the, oh, the police yes. station. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Constable, uh, uh, Constable Nic uh, Nicholas Angel. Um, and it's just about kicking to that. And I was like, I know it's like one o'clock in the morning, but what I'll do is I will go and get another drink and I'm going to sit down and watch this. And what's even better is because it was on film four, there was adverts oh every 15 God. minutes. So you could, you know, whatever you wanted to do. And, but they didn't cut any of it. It just kind of was like just adverts placed in the middle of the film. Oh, and I, I got to the end of it. and was like, that was good. I really enjoyed that. I'm going to bed now. Um, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Is, it it's just keeps good. giving. And I think for me, the world's end keeps giving. So Shaun of the Dead, I haven't seen for donkey's years and i don't think i'll watch it again in a hurry yeah but world's end i watched about three times in a row because i loved it <laughs> absolutely loved it. i'd forgotten how good that film yeah. is and hot fuzz is just yeah yeah it's amazing yeah yeah i mean it just you just can't no. go wrong with it it's like uh oh that's uh that's vicky's <laughs> brother's auntie's brother's boy why didn't you say that earlier couldn't see his face <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, Love it. so good. Right. Question seven, Battle of the Fruit and the Veg. I mean, this is going to be interesting. I've, I've put one in again, selfishly, to tell a joke. Um, and I'll, I'll, wait to, I'll wait till we get to that one. To, 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 so to I, can, I think that. we can whiz through these. Yeah. Pineapple, Pineapple. versus butternut squash. Because, like, what Pineapple. the hell? It's got, it's got yeah. armor plating and funny hair. Have you have you ever like lent over a pineapple accidentally at like a supermarket to pick something else up and stabbed yeah, one of the leaves? Yeah, basically giving myself a tracheotomy. A yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say you can have a child's eye out and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full hot fuzz, <laughs> a pineapple through the neck. Um, you could <laughs> right through the chin. Yeah, yeah, right up to the chin. Uh, watermelon versus pumpkin. Watermelon. Oh, 
I'm no, to think of I don't know. King. Yeah, oh, I, I think I don't know, Dom. I would have gone with. I, th- I think a uh, pumpkin's more robust. I mean, if you threw one at me, I, I'm not going to lie. Both would probably if, go. It, so, if somebody said to you, "I'm going to drop a watermelon on your head from a height of ten meters, and I'm going to drop a pumpkin on your head from a height of ten meters," which one would you choose? And I think this will settle it. Oh, probably the watermelon. I think the watermelon. Actually, yeah. So I think the pumpkin has it. Yeah. Then. Because I know a watermelon would split, whereas a pumpkin's <laughs> yeah, quite hard yeah, on is, the outside. So and it's going to be like hitting like a rock. Yeah. That would be like a hot fuzz moment as well. Uh, yes. Like by Wells yeah, especially if you get the stalk. Yeah. Right through the brain. That's what we need. Tomatoes versus grapes. <laughs> and these are tomatoes. <laughs> you wrote these and these are tom- I'm talking when I say tomatoes, I'm talking cherry tomatoes on the vine versus grapes. Yeah. Uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes are as- yeah. acidic. Whereas grapes are, yeah, grapes are. Can I tell my joke Absolutely. for the next one? Uh, onions are the only veg, uh, are only the only fruit and veg to make you cry. And so I threw a coconut in his face. <laughs> it's proven wrong. Onion versus coconut. <laughs> I think coconut. We've ridden the breadth and depth of the land. No, you haven't. You've got two halves of a coconut. You're banging them together. <laughs> it's Monty Python. Sorry, isn't it? that's none of the films that we've mentioned. That's Monty Holy Python Grail. and Holy Grail. Yeah, we're we're very weary. Where'd you find the coconuts? <laughs> Where'd you get the coconuts? We found them. You found them? <laughs> I think coconut. Coconut yeah. would, would win on that one. And then peas versus <laughs> beans. Peas. Mm. Peas. Put them in a yeah. shooter. Cover them in ketchup. Yeah. Easy peas. Cover them in ketchup. Yes. So we need to yes, have we this do. discussion. We do. We do. And we need to devote at least half an hour. No, I'm joking. But we do need to have this discussion. <laughs> so, fish and chips is a godly dinner, a dish. Uh, I think it's, it is later on. Um, but the best way to eat. So it was. It was all about um, the way that it came up. Actually, I, I'm, I'm now re- slowly recalling how it came up. So we were discussing the pubs from the uh, World's End, um, and how when Jerry does the Golden Mile, he's a bit nervous. <laughs> it being all the alcohol. But if you're going to do a pub golf, you don't have to do drinks or alcoholic drinks. So you can swap that in for, right, you, I don't know, you do a, bar, a pint in the first pub and that's a par four. So you've got to do it in four gulps. But then maybe you do like a shot, which is a par one, and then you maybe do a water, which is a par two. Um, but you could also do it with food. Um, so we were discussing hot dogs uh, and it's a par, I don't know, let's say par six to do a whole hot dog. But then you can think tactically, do you, if you just eat the sausage, you could probably do the sausage in maybe two. And then maybe you could do the bun in like maybe three. That makes it only five. So you're well under par then. And then we were discussing peas, about scooping up peas with a fork. And if you could do like a bowl of peas and you've got a par, I don't know, let's say six. <laughs> But obviously that means you've got to get enough peas on your fork to be able to eat it because otherwise you could end up being individual peas um, and uh, and it could, you know, you could be at like 27 over over par. <laughs> and Jerry is the first person that I've ever f- I've ever found that is another, that also puts tomato ketchup just yeah. on their peas. And you've got to drown it. I'm not talking about just a little drizzle. Yeah. You, you properly go for it. Yeah, it's like kind of like yes. a mini soup. Yeah, tomato soup with peas. Yeah. 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 Tomato yeah, vinegar Yeah, tomato vinegar. Yeah, <laughs> vinegary tomato, tomato soup, soup with peas. Love it. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that if you have fish and chips, so the best fish and chips platter is obviously chips with salt, vinegar, nice bit of battered cod, tartar sauce yes. for the, the cod, and then garden peas, 
tomato ketchup, but the tomato ketchup yes. only yes, goes on the garlic. Exactly, and there's nothing wrong with having both. So I know people are going to be listening to no. this saying, oh, for goodness sake, but no, there's nothing wrong with it. You, yes. you have your tartar sauce with the fish, absolutely. And then you finish mm-hmm. that mouthful, you you, you, you <laughs> spike a chip and you just run it through your sea of ketchup and peas. Oh. Absolutely. Suits you, sir. Best thing ever. And I will not hear a bad word said about tomato ketchup on peas. I will come for you. <laughs> You'll I'll get, get me mop. <laughs> I'll get me mop. You'll get Will Smith on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There'll be a Will Smith happening. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So, yeah. Peas. Absolutely. Question eight. Battle of the mythical creatures. Kind of a bit of a filler one for us, I think, here. Uh, <laughs> Just because we were like, whatever. <laughs> Again, whiz through these. I think... Uh, vampire versus werewolf. Vampire. vampire. Godzilla versus the Kraken. Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Are we talking like 19, like 70s Godzilla? Or are we talking like 2000s Godzilla? Either, I think. Because... Mm, the 2000s Godzilla, like the most recent uh, one. Y- yes. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's no contest for the 2000s Godzilla. For, for, mm. for the 60s, even the 60s Godzilla, I think would be more of a match. But you know, you've got this creature that can remember, like, can swim, can go on land. It's yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Godzilla. Uh, unicorn versus mermaid. <laughs> unicorn mermaids are all Capricorns. They're all peace lovers. They're like that. They're, they're like us. <laughs> We can only say that because exactly. we're both they're Capricorns. Like <laughs> right? Yeah. They're, they're peace lovers. We are the sea goats. Yes. Uh, dragon versus anything. Dragon. Yeah, I was going to say, name something that could be a dragon. Nothing. Irony being, it's St. George's Day go. tomorrow. I mean, the things can breathe fire, for God's sakes. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Now, weirdly, I've just got the scene or the image of Shrek <laughs> where it's like, how did Donkey and the Dragon have the baby? <laughs> That's, not That's a whole different podcast. I'd forgotten about that. I'd forgotten about that. Brilliant. <laughs> it's like throwing a sausage down a corridor. <laughs> it's gone. Have I gone too far? Uh, no. No. My mother's not going to do that. I'm just gonna, what I'm going to do now, because th- this is a video podcast, I'm just going to hide. <laughs> just, I, I can't do that because I've got a pop filter. I've got the, the same pop filter. Oh, dear. Uh, question nine. And this is, this is where the, the tomato ketchup thing uh, Battle of the Pub yes. Grub. Yes. Now. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Dumb. When I <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, "This is the best <laughs> one ever." I was like, "Jerry, you are yeah. a genius." Um, so I'm not agreeing that I'm a genius. I just thought, call. I just, I just wanted to make it difficult. <laughs> I deliberately wanted to. It's so marginal. Would you go down that yes. list? It's gonna it's gonna be similar to like the trilogies where you know they're not it's not like one's really good and one's really bad. It's like yeah, oh, it's this one's close. just yeah, exactly. a little bit better. Yeah. Uh so beer battered cod versus scampi and chips. <sighs> what would you go for? I mean if the if the beer battered cod come with chips, I think. Yes, well. yeah, yeah. Beer battered sorry, yeah, they, they would come with chips. So it's effectively cod versus yeah. scampi. Um Marty Funsters. I think it'll have to be the cod for me. me. But it might depend on where I'm getting. If I'm going to traditional fish and chip shops, it's the cod. Beer battered cod, all of that. If I'm out and about and I just want a bite to eat, you know, something picky, scampi's really good because it's obviously just in bits for you. So you can just kind of, you can eat, it's like, it's like, it's like fishy chicken nuggets. Yes, exactly. Scampi's a good, Takeaway yeah. thing, yeah. If I'm on the and move, 
So it is yeah, situational. Yeah, and scampi dunked in a nice deep well of tartar sauce, for example. That That's pretty hard oh. to beat. Tartar sauce of both yeah, of them is yeah, mandatory. It is mandatory, to be fair. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, I, I think the cod just... Like, if I'm going <laughs> to sit down, the cod... The cod gets it by a... If I'm... Yeah. A whisker. A gill. Scale. A scale? Well, um... Catfish and whiskers. That's true. Whisker it is then. <laughs> yeah, it gets it by catfish's whisker. Oh, sorry, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever for you. Yeah, exactly you know, the same. same. Yeah, absolutely. Agree with all of that. Mm. Sticky toffee pudding versus apple and crumble with custard. Oh. And by the way, sorry, because oh, I haven't been very clear. So you can have sticky toffee pudding with custard or apple crumble and custard. So I've just kind of added that that bit, you know. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I'm happy to go first on this because I've, I've thought a lot about this. For me, it'll have to be the crumble. I agree with you. I do have an explanation on Yeah, why. I, I couldn't figure out why. So because I want to hear your explanation. Okay. I can. I can hear figure out cry. So and it's so it's the reason why I don't like mashed potato. I like crunchy foods. Right. I'm addicted to crunch. And Sticky toffee pudding, don't get me wrong, it's great, but it's a, it's soft yeah. and moist. Whereas apple crumble, if apple crumble is done right, yeah. it has to be done right, and you've got like soft and moist, obviously, insides, and then you've got the pastry, and if they've done it right and they've put a glaze on the top so there's a real crunch, then you're talking, mm, yeah, 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 that, 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 that does it for me. I do have a, a, a bigger preference of crumble flavour, though, than apple. And that's rhubarb. Oh. Rhubarb crumble is okay. A it's godly food. One hundred percent. In fact, nothing beats rhubarb crumble. Nothing. You, you yeah. can put you can put apple yeah. crumble in front of me. Sticky toffee pudding. Um, double, double stuffed. Sti- yeah, double. It doesn't matter what you put in front of me. I'm going to go for rhubarb crumble and custard every time. It, it is. It's god level. Cool. Question then: Custard, cream, or ice cream as the uh, as the custard. accompaniment? Every time, custard. You're a custard, yeah. If custard is an option, every time. Custard is good, hot, yeah. cold, and yeah. oh, don't uh, ice cream is good if it's if ice cream is the main thing, but as an accompaniment, custard, custard is the best, is the best yeah. thing. See, every time. And do you like the skin when you get on top of custard sometimes? Not really, but but I will eat it. So I'll just I'll just shove the spoon in and just ah, wiggle it about and yeah. just eat eat it. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. The the biggest argument in our household is who gets to lick the spoon at the end. Well, look, Ambrosia do amazing custard, don't they? I love ambrosia yes. custard. So the whole thing of, you know, when you finish pouring it, you want to just cut the top off the the ambrosia custard because there's a <laughs> lot that stays in the thing and you just want to get a spoon and scoop that out. Just eat that on its own. Po- no, I don't oh, poo yeah, bear poo- it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just poo bear Somebody it. Somebody pull me out. Spoon. I'm stuck. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's like the scene from Vicar of Dibley where she's got the <laughs> chocolate fountain and she's like, it's, it's a massive one. She's like, it's no good, I'm going in. Can you imagine filling that with custard? <laughs> I'd oh, love that. That oh, is so I'd... good. That would be so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, ribeye steak and chips versus a bacon burger. Ooh. Um, 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 I think that's going to have to be the, the steak, steak for me as well. Yeah, for me. Don't get me wrong. There are times where I just think I want a big fat burger. Give me a big fat burger. Um, but if 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 I've got an option of steak, yeah, it has to be that. I suppose the question is now: How do you yeah. like the steak? Yeah. Wipe its ass. Slap it on a plate. If it's still mooing, that's a benefit. It's got that's to virtually be uncontaminated by heat. <laughs> yep. I want to still chewing yep. the grass seeds. Yeah. Rare, 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 all the <laughs> way. Um 
Last one. The last one is evil. It is evil. The last one is... It is evil. Actually, my answer to it surprised... It surprised me. Okay. Uh, So Sunday roast versus full English breakfast. What I find interesting about those is there are bits of the traditional one that I don't like. Oh, okay. Like, I don't like mushrooms, and I don't like mashed potato, if you have mashed potato with your roast. You shouldn't. You should have roast potatoes. That's the kind of... Yeah, I wouldn't. But yeah, yeah. I don't like mash. So, for, and for me as well, I would never have to make the choice because they're separate meals. They are. For me. And the full English obviously hits the spot as a big breakfast. But I have had a full mm, English for yeah. a dinner as well. And that's that's also surprisingly yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you have a roast dinner and it's got roast pork, a little crackling, roast potatoes, roast butternut squash, roast swede, uh, roast parsnips, peas, gravy... Round of beans, carrots, <laughs> you know, all of the trimmings. Proper roast, duck fat roast Bread potatoes, sauce. all of that. Bread sauce. Yorkshire puddings. Although Yorkshire puddings normally with beef. No, you can, no, no, no. You can, Yorkshire puddings with any roast. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Then probably the roast dinner just for me, purely because I've only started liking eggs in the last kind of three right. or four years and i don't like mushrooms and i'm not a big fan of tomatoes okay so i think it's the roast for me so i thought that it was going to be of the roast is going to be the obvious choice for me until i Mm. started googling full english breakfast and seeing some of the images that came up of some really good thing full english breakfast and i was thinking so if i had to choose so if somebody was to say to me, you got yeah, you've you've got the option of just one main meal, so you can have a, a f- I'm talking like top end full English breakfast, mm-hmm. or later on you can have a roast. I think I'd go for the top end full English breakfast. I mean, I'm not, I I can't argue. I, th- I just it's it is. such a difficult choice. Um, what's your preference for? bread type and egg and the way you do your eggs egg fried fried eggs fried egg. side up bread bread mm-hmm. it's gonna be white toasted see i love french toast okay and um i would in a full english i'd have a fried egg but i do love I'd, scrambled i egg. also love scrambled egg but i think with full english I've tried I've tried it with both. I, mm. I think fried just about does it. Yeah, fried yeah. I think fried. Yeah. Fry fry and then, you know, fried egg, bit of some bacon, sausage. Yeah. Baked beans. Yeah. Bit of toast with lots of butter, proper butter. Yeah, proper salted oh. butter. There's not I mean there's not many meals that really can beat it. No. Let's be totally <laughs> That's honest. what I mean. Uh, and I roast when you is, Google, yeah. when you I Google roast it, is, and see the images that yeah. come up, you just think, "Oh, that's." I know which one I'd prefer to prepare. Yeah, <laughs> same here. And and all the washing up you have to do afterwards. <laughs> Couple yeah. of sides of toast. Neck. Oh, roast is a yeah. yeah. Based on that alone, it's not worth yeah. the hassle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if I went to a pub and they were off in a roast, I'd be like, eh, maybe I would go for the roast maybe or actually if my mum was doing a roast dinner it'd be like no. yes yes hopefully that's what we get to me <laughs> nudge nudge <laughs> yeah. she won't hear this Don't. until like the uh, and it'll be entirely what my my sister wants because it's a no, but what tomorrow, you should so, do yeah, you should just that. play this clip tomorrow <laughs> just say oh, we just did this first time we've ever done a video podcast just let me just play this clip Un- unfortunately, um, my sister is lactose intolerant and my mum is uh, gluten intolerant. 
so going going to my and it, this, oh, that's only happened in the last three or four maybe okay. five years so going back to my parents is food wise is not, not as much fun well except when your mum buys um something that that, that she and my sister can't have like and it's like well me and my dad better eat that don't we it's like it's like you know i'm buying i've always wanted to do this i've never had the guts to do it but i'd love to do it it's like buying chloe um an imperial star destroyer lego imperial star destroyer for her <laughs> birthday and she opens it up and goes what and you go it's okay i'll have it <laughs> it's not the same at all and you'd be very swiftly to sub- divorced yeah, wouldn't you <laughs> you know what <laughs> at least I can take my mind off things by building the Imperial Star Destroyer it would soften the blow <laughs> oh dear <laughs> d- yeah maybe maybe right uh, question 10 we're on to the final section of these but I, I've, I'm <laughs> loving this we have to do another one of these that coming up um the ultimate unsettled battle yeah. is what you've labelled this, and I, I really liked it. And I found a couple more, and I, I saw, on, and I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So you've got the first one: Pepsi versus Coke. Coke. I'm would say Coke. Does it change depending on the one? So like Coke Zero versus Pepsi yeah, Max. Coke. Yeah, I prefer Coke Zero. Yeah, Coke. Hmm. I have loved that Coke have finally done a no sugar, no caffeine one. Yes. Oh, it's so good. It means exactly. I can have Coke and again. Yeah. I, and the taste of it as well. Even Diet Coke, once you get the taste for mm. it, it's... Yeah, I think Coke has the edge. Yeah, yeah Coke has the edge. It's It's like... <laughs> I've always wanted to do it when they go, is Pepsi okay? I've always wanted to go, yeah. no, actually... <laughs> I've always wanted to be un-British yeah. enough to be able to say be that, that to Be that difficult a customer. No, I'm sorry. Thing. No, Pepsi's <laughs> not the same. I don't no. want Pepsi. Take your Pepsi. Shove your Pepsi. <laughs> Take your <laughs> brown water and chuck it in the bin. Uh, but then the second one that you've put, Sprite versus 7-Up. Seven, seven Up. I don't think I could... I don't think I've had a Seven Up in years. Yeah, I, I, the reason why I say Seven Up is because it's it's that little bit sweeter. Yeah, and I've got a real sweet tooth. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. If they're, ex- I mean, they're exactly the same. I'd have to go. Um, I'd have to probably go Sprite purely because it's made by it was made by the Coca Cola f- company. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, it is, it is, um, and yeah. So interesting. So Seven Up is owned by Dr Pepper, so which is PepsiCo, which is Pepsi. Right. So again, it's it's basically yeah. the same thing, yeah. but on the lemon and lime side instead of instead of that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm probably gonna have to go. For me, it's the Sprite. Like if I saw it, I'd go for the Sprite. I think. I always remember Seven Up being too fizzy. It is pretty fizzy, yeah. It's yeah. very fizzy in comparison to anything else. So, mm, yeah, I think I'd go for the Sprite. In interestingly, so if I if if you were to go into a shop now and you're like, right, I want a cool can, fizzy drink, what would you go for? Coke. So would you go for Pepsi, Coke, Sprite, Seven Up, or Fanta? Coke. Yeah. Coke would be your choice. And would you go for bottle, bottle or can? I prefer bottle. Definitely every time. Yeah, if mm, I get to okay. a pub, I'll ask for a Coke, but I'll say, can can I have Coke from a bottle? It's like for God's sakes, don't give me a, okay. don't give me Coke from that that manky dispenser. That's just no, some yeah, weird weird dark. syrupy concoction. I want proper Coke. Yeah. No, it's more like if you go to like the fridge that you go to like a like those like garden cafes. Yes. I kind of prefer yeah. to them as. 
I'd pick out, pick out a, bottle a bottle because there's something about the taste of the Coke from a bottle, which does taste a little better than from a can. Glass bottle versus plastic. Oh, bottle? glass every. T- oh, sorry. Yeah, glass bottle every time. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Sorry, because I was I had glass bottle in my head. So, glass bottle. Yeah. Is mm. number one. Can number two. Plastic bottle number three. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I assumed yeah. that as much. Just I just suddenly went. Oh, yeah. 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 That's no, a really yes. good point. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it would be Coke. I, I would probably go for the fa- I, I, Fanta. I do like a good okay. Fanta, I think. Okay. Yeah. I do like a good Fanta. I like I like orange flavored things, which I know Laura is going to grimace because she hates orange. Um, the next one I have never even considered. <laughs> and I did a lot of thinking when we first looked through this. And I do have Ooh, an answer. But it's interesting. interesting. So Duracell versus Energizer. Duracell versus so, Energizer. I take Duracell more seriously because you haven't got the whole bunny thing and and then the whole bunny thing conjures up all sorts of other stuff that you really shouldn't be thinking about. <laughs> and and so for me Duracell is, is more of a serious you know, you need to get the job done. Mm. You need you need a battery, you want a battery that's gonna really get the job done, it's Duracell. Yeah, if I go into a shop, I I always yeah. pick up the Duracell batteries, and I prefer I prefer the but, and the look of them as well. You see, you got that lovely copper top. Yeah, but I otherwise, I have no idea where I've picked that up from. That's complete environmental bias. Yeah, what well, well exact? Yeah, absolutely. Not. So so there you go. So you would reach for the. Duracell, so would I, but but Duracell. there's no real logical. They're probably yeah, they exactly are. the same. They're probably made in the same factory. Probably. But, like, if I went, like, if I go into ASDA, other supermarkets are probably available and sell their own batteries. But own brand ASDA, Energizer, Duracell, I would, it would be. Yeah, it's Duracell a brand first. Yeah, it's uh, a brand 100%. thing. It's your brand perception. I don't know. What's the. Oh no! This is a um, this is a l- long life. Apparently, that's in the back of this, but it's the battery okay. that came with it. Yeah, when you replace no that, though, <laughs> you'll probably replace it with a Duracell. Well, I know I will because I've got uh, a there pack you of go. AAA Duracell batteries in, there you, there in, you in go. the cupboard. <laughs> in in the in the or oh, no, we've got to be a bit more politically correct. I was going to say man drawer as uh, Michael McIntyre, but I suppose it's just the, the everything the drawer. thing drawer. We all have that drawer. Yeah, yeah, it just drawer. has everything in it. It's got tape yep. measure, batteries, yep. pliers, um, sellotape, sellotape, piece of string. Yeah, pliers. Yeah, there's a piece of string in there. I've got zip ties. <clears throat> That's dodgy, but yeah. <laughs> doing the cabling oh, yeah. you need zip ties um, <clears throat> yeah well you have everything menus Men- from the Chinese, Chinese that you never look at Indian takeaway fish and chips <laughs> Would you already know I want number 34 <laughs> yeah you, like Michael McIntyre says you have to spend 45 minutes looking through each menu then choosing exactly <laughs> the same thing that you've had every week for the last 14 years that's important, but you yes. have to go through that ritual. <laughs> yeah, everything draw has everything in it, doesn't yeah. it? Nails, scissors, file, yeah. tweezers. Yeah. Mm, tweezers <laughs> in the bathroom for me. Oh, well. Right, next one on here. We're going to get the proper fanboys rolled up now. So we've got PlayStation versus Xbox and Sega versus Nintendo. I've kind of combined them together. A tough one. So, it is t- it, okay. One of one of them is tough for me. The other one isn't. So Sega versus Nintendo. Nintendo definitely. Yes. Um, because I love the yeah, Nintendo Wii. I agree with that. The Nintendo. Um, th- was it the Nintendo GameCube? Was yeah, before, before the Wii. The Wii. Yeah. It was the one that had the best Star Wars game, ever. 
at the time. Um, well, it was the one where you li you literally could fly your X-wing into the Death Star and recreate that that mm. final scene of of a New Hope. Ah, oh, fantastic! Love it. Um, but the Wii is is yeah. Is I mean, really. Yeah, I mean. It, Interestingly, all week I've had the Wii intro do, music. Do 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 I've had that in my head all week. But that's on a that's that's gonna be for a topical conversation. Um the I agree, and the Nintendo sixty four being the first console that I had uh with Goldeneye, Mario Kart, Banjo kazooie Mario sixty four um, Super Smash Bros. Uh, Ocarina of Time, which is hands down probably the greatest game ever known that, that's been ever made. Um, and I still never have completed it despite having owned it since 1996. Um, yeah, Nintendo outweighs Sega. I mean, Sega has Sonic, but I never really got well, into the Sonic games. No. Mega Man. It was a lot of like 2D side scrollers, which I just, which they made really hard and I never I don't enjoy them whereas Banjo Kazooie was just a yeah. masterpiece so uh, I need to do a playthrough of uh, Banjo Kazooie on my gaming channel which you can I will you can find in the channel linked if you go to the YouTube of Distinct and Jovial it's linked to me um, <laughs> selfish plug but the PlayStation versus the Xbox is yeah, a that little is bit tough. more tougher I'd love to know I'd love to hear your your views on it first because i'm still undecided by the way so yeah so i didn't have a PS playstation one i'm going to take the playstation one out of it because the playstation one was a rival for the Nintendo 64 and the playstation one was really really good um but it was just in a different league i think so then you kind of go playstation 2 xbox playstation 2 is the most epic console still got mine ever um um, ours unfortunately died so we, we probably still do have it to be honest but it's, it's dead um, and I'm just thinking you know you've got it's, it's all the Ratchet and Clank Jack and Dexter uh, Gran Turismo 4 uh, those types of video games that just that was my child that was my Grand early Theft teens. Auto Vice City yeah, you, I, was, I wasn't oh, old okay. enough for it if you know what I mean so then, then my next one was the Xbox 360. Which now, I've also got. Rocky start on the Xbox 360. Because I had the Ring of Death twice. The Red Ring of Death oh, twice. Wow. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they fried themselves quite frequently. But I got Oblivion. <sighs> Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Uh, 1,900 hours later, oh God, Dom. still playing it. Um, I, I lost days and days and days to that. Um, and it just holds a bit of nostalgia. And then you've also got Halo 3 yeah. and the number of hours I sunk into that. And then afterwards, I did get an Xbox One, but I didn't really play it that much. Um, and I, could, I, I couldn't afford a PlayStation 3, and I couldn't afford a PlayStation 4, and I never got, like, an Xbox One X. And now you're on, like, the PlayStation 5 and X... Oh, sorry, and the Xbox X. And now you've got the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox mm. One X. And it's a bit like, I've moved on, so I'm, I'm now PC. Um, which means at times I get the best of both worlds. So, for example, PC-wise, I've got... The newest Halo, Halo Infinite. I've got the latest Forza, which is kind of the rival. Gran Turismo, yes, is PlayStation exclusive, but they've just put God of War on the PC as well. So it's it's really difficult in terms of like which one I prefer. Um, if I was going to buy one now, I would buy a PlayStation. I'm, I'm trying to buy a PlayStation 5 because everything on Xbox I can play on the PC. Right. So... I'm probably leaning towards specifically PlayStation over if Xbox. If you didn't have your PC? If I didn't have my PC, I don't know. I genuinely don't know because it's, 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 it's so uh, neck and neck, isn't it? I've looked into it probably both. Still, it, it probably still... 
it'd probably still be PlayStation. And the reason why is because there aren't that many exclusives that I play. Now, I would go for Xbox, but for one reason only. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, the only, that that's the only Definitely. reason. I looked at everything else and it was it's real neck and neck between those two. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a hard one, I think. Um, and having looked at like loads of other things around it, it's just so, so tough. I can't bloody get hold of any of them anyway. And then the final one. Stuff. No, 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 sold out. PS Five's been out, of, been sold out for about eighteen months. As, as long as that, really? Insane. Bloody hell! It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how long it's just not been. Yeah. The final one that I've put down, which I think is one of the yeah. first things we addressed, Android versus iPhone. This is easy for me, to the point that even my daughter's fully on board with it. Android. <laughs> All the way, all Samsung, the way. specifically I, Samsung. I am, I'm iPhone all the way. And yes, I arrange my apps by color. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to make a comment on that. No, no, yeah. Okay. All my friends know already. Yeah, yeah. Nice. There, there you go. Nice. It's just that's the way I am. Um, yes. Uh, whereas I'm an iPhone, and I do love my Mac. That that work has very graciously provided for me. Um, Fair enough. But I also do like my Windows PC that I've got as well. So, um, I do prefer my iPhone to Android. I think I... I have to admit. I have an issue with anything where it's... They push you towards proprietary. And, and mm. that's why I struggle with Apple. Oh yeah, I had to buy a new cable because my new car's got USB C. Right. So I had to buy a new cable, which is you know USB C right. to iPhone. And uh, you know, how much do you think right. for a cable? I was thinking, uh, maybe a tenner. Yeah, I'm not twenty five quid. And if you get like some fake one, it charges at half the speed and things like that. I was like, I've got to get a proper one, haven't you? Oh, God. Yeah, it's yeah, twenty five quid for a cable. 25 quid for a cable yeah. this, you know, this sort of long it's ridiculous so yes no I can understand I can understand why I, I'm not like oh my god it has to be iPhone or I'm going to die um, but because I've spent so long with iPhones I've bought loads of apps it would just Fair be a enough. pain to switch over um, and I don't have anything really locked to Apple I don't use their iCloud service I don't use uh, you know I don't use their calendar service I use things like Google, Todoist, yeah. things like that that switches over. So much easier, much easier. Cool. Wow. So we've we done have. all the battles off. We've done all the battles off. Wow. 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 I think we're both beginning to flag. We've been yeah, I don't. For quite I, a while. I, I don't know how long we've been recording for. It's just flown by. Two. Oh, here oh, we does go. It not Two let hours, it twenty-seven minutes, and fifty-nine seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been going for quite a while. Um. I, I do want to do the improving our health bit. Uh, so so this is going to actually probably click over to be one of our longer podcasts, longest podcasts. So uh, thank you so much for watching yeah, and listening first, uh, for those that managed to watch. Um, the previous health choice, I don't, I, I don't think I want to really talk too much in depth because I think it defeats the yeah, object. I agree. Because it's about doing the selfish act. It's like... I could say yes, I've done some, or no, I haven't done some, but I'm I'm just not going to go into it because the whole point is to 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 do that. And I've done a lot on just trying to be a better person recently, personally, and I think that certain things will happen when they do. So I don't know no, what, exactly what your thoughts the same. are. Really, exactly. I know it's, I'm not yeah. saying it like a cop out, but it's exactly the same. I, I'm. I've just made a point of being even more thoughtful about other people than than i am normally and there are times when mm. I've, I've sort of caught yeah. myself and thought mm. so i've made a point for example of stopping work and sending a message to check that somebody's okay or you know or yeah. yeah yeah and we, we, yeah we 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 know we know yeah. this, that same person and we wish them the best um 
and it's it, it's one of those weird things like not only have I uh, sort of said I uh, not only have I allowed myself to to make sure that I, I'm doing that as well I've also allowed myself to feel bad things but make sure I'm not telling that yeah that, but then, you know there's been a couple of times where I've you know switched the camera off turn, come off mute and gone what a blithering idiot and then kind of gone yeah that's the next slide you or said, you know something yeah it's okay yeah, Jerry I think we should put that in the next podcast <laughs> Yeah, all right then, Jerry. We'll we'll do that in the battle of. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I no, no, it. I know. I'm you joking, know that's I'm not joking. true. Don't, don't, don't do me <laughs> no, dirty like joking. this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah, we're just uh, gonna keep that yeah. those to ourselves and and just again as always, we always encourage people to do um, a little bit. You know, if the world was a nicer it place, be. it'd be so much yeah. easier. But the next one, the next health choice, is something I've already started, um, and I think it'll be it'll be an interesting thing if if you're willing, Jerry, to, to do that. So there is a link on there. Yeah. Um, there is an Android application. I don't know if you've ever seen. I've it got before. it. I've actually got, you've got it. Got Duolingo. Yeah. You've got Duolingo. Do you what do you what languages do you do on French. there? And do you do it French? Ah, uh, French. Oh, I suppose because yeah. yes, because you you've got line uh, reports there. Yes. In France. Yes. Yeah, parlez-vous français? So we will have to trade. I'll um, uh, we'll have to offline. We'll have to uh, give our uh, uh, usernames to each other, uh, yeah. so we can add each other as friends. Um, but what I've set myself a challenge. I'm not doing it all the time. So I'm currently doing German on my Duolingo. I'm going over to Germany to visit a friend, uh, good old Samwise, and. <laughs> It's just nice to just be able to have a little bit. I should really be doing Spanish for when I go to Spain, but I can't learn all the European languages. But what I'm doing a challenge, so four days a week I'm doing German, and then three days a week I am doing Ukrainian. Uh, and that is a small little challenge that I have set myself. It is really hard, but it's just been the challenge that I've kind of set myself. So up to you whether you want to add it on and see if you can do that one every now and then i think i'll give it a go really... yeah it's it's tough <laughs> yeah it's i tough. bet i gave it the large years ago when when i did um when i started aikido and i thought yeah i'll learn japanese yeah no chance <laughs> that yeah. was it, impossible for me yeah and i mean from I mean I I spoke a little bit of Korean when we were talking about the uh, when we were talking about oh uh, uh, Swanee did come back to me about what that was he okay. did message me about what it was so I'm just going to bring it up messenger um, and uh, he but yeah I, I I can't read Korean I just can read the phonetics that they write down on all the websites rather than you know I can yeah. count to ten han adul set net dasiyasi ogop yodu a hop yo but I don't know what that looks like in Korean. I just know that it, you know, Hana is one because that's how it's written down. H-A-N-N-A. Uh, so I was right. It's uh, it, so in English, it was, which is the, this, oh, this yeah, the, yeah. Uh, it's a double finger thrust. It's not a strike, double finger thrust, um, which is a double being do, so do, uh, finger being song, uh, and thrust being togi so do song garat togi um okay and then we did have a small discussion that it was technically it's a front uh uh thrust rather than a uh side or anything like that okay. so you could change add that but similarly <laughs> i don't know the korean i don't know what it looks like in korean so um yeah i so i've been doing a little bit of ukrainian i can even bring some of it up in fact uh Duolingo has just sent me a notification to tell me I have full hearts again because I failed it so badly. Um, so for those that are on there, you can see I'm on like unit one. Oh, yeah. Which is just <laughs> the letters. Um, and then if I start it, it's it it's a bit like that. It's very, very difficult. Th this, is the, this is the bit that I find difficult. So uh, obviously I don't know the pronunciation it's a te, all right? And it's a T, and a, I'm going to call it a backwards N, because the N, rather than going, you know, like that, yeah, it, it goes, it, it 
goes like that. So the diagonal's the wrong way, right? And look what it translates to, like literally. It's like, where are you? It's oh, like right. the, it's it's two letters. Well, no, that that those those four letters are where are you, put together. Where are you, right? And and then to that. Ooh, That's okay. r- really difficult. Yeah. Now it technically is I and uh, uh, I and mother is what that like literally translates as. So that should yeah, I. Oops. I and mother. Oh no, mother. There you go. That's what it literally translates as. So it's quite a, a difficult kind of thing okay. to to do that so for the for the auditory listeners i was showing my phone up to some of the sentence but um yeah so i being there's no other way to describe it it's a it's a mirrored r the r is just completely the wrong way and being a lowercase i and then mother being m a capital t but the t is the same height as a lowercase letter and then an n with a diagonal going the wrong way around and it's the Cyrillic alphabet is just going to be very fun to learn, I think. Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> I think that maybe the um, the objective is to be able to say, hello, hello, Dom, how are you, in Ukrainian. Mm. Uh, it's just difficult, because obviously Duolingo sometimes is like a set. Yeah, it, it does. It bounces so, I know. all over it, the place. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so like if I go to the the German that I do... Uh, let me just cl- clear out that in that session. Oh, don't tell me it's going to have to go for an advert. No, okay. So if we go back to German, so like it starts off, you've got basics, which is like hello. So you've got like bitter, uh, hello, uh, you know, tusk, which is goodbye, things like that. But then it goes on to family. So you start talking about mother, father, you know, Bruder, Walter, things like that. Then it's got basics two, which I can never remember what basics two, but then it's got greetings. And I think I've done greetings, but that's things like, how are you? As expected. And then it jumps to restaurants, places, jobs, hobbies, directions. And that's the first unit. Yeah, it's, it's the same in French as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. It bounces around a little bit, I find. Um and the themes that the hardest bit I always find is because it doesn't directly teach you grammar. Um, what I find is that I can, I, I, I can do a literal translation in my head, but I, I'm never going to be able to go right. I need you to write grammatically correct. Yeah, is it a yeah? Is the sentence grammatically correct or is yeah. 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 yeah, and you never really get taught like why is it like d and why is it der and why is it there's and uh, French was another one that just it, it, it's, it's another one it's like when is it feminine when is it masculine why when do you put an s on the end when do you pronounce the s it's, yeah. there's no it doesn't quite teach you that but this is enough to to perhaps hopefully learn the letters fair enough so I'm looking for I'm looking forward to it. so that's our challenge for this this okay. month just to add that language and we should probably uh offline and maybe we'll put it online as well if anyone wants to add us. Um, we can. I, I'm happy to put my username if anyone wants to add me as a friend and see how useless I am at learning languages. You're not as bad as I am at languages. Trust me. No, oh, I'm terrible. I can barely speak English. <laughs> and I host a podcast. Well, that's not that. You can speak Australian, English, Canadian, <laughs> American. I can't speak American. <laughs> yeah, you can. Trash can elevator. <laughs> they have to be descriptive. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. It's on the side. Exactly. <laughs> they need to be told where to walk. Aluminum. Uh, there you go. It's American. They're not, they're not glasses. They're eyeglasses. Yeah. <laughs> 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 For all our American listeners out there. Indeed. Um... I think we're at the end, Jerry. I think we I are. wrapped it on a little bit at the end. This is good. Look at that. Two hours, 39 minutes, 14 seconds. Bosh. Do you want us to round us off with yep. your final thoughts? It's not very poignant this month. It's just... 
Guten Nacht. Samwise. That's it. Yes. That's how I'm going to round it. it off. No, um, I, I, I just want to say, um, it's this has been a really interesting experience because it's made me think of it. This has probably been the most difficult podcast to record because I'm I'm conscious of the fact that that we are recording ourselves as well. Um, but it's also been probably the most relaxed as well at the same time, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So it, it gets more and more, I get more, I relax through the whole thing more as each, as we do each one. Mm. Um, and yeah, I must admit that, that, I don't know, this this one flowed really well. So, so final thoughts for, um, I, I don't know, I can't think of anything poignant. So all I'm going to say is, if you haven't watched it already, people, um, the Blood and Cornetto trilogy. Yes, yes, it'll change. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go rewatch those at some point. Yeah, after I've watched Con Air and Predator, apparently. Pre- not in that order. Mm. You need to watch Predator first, then Con Air, Con Air. then the Alien, the Alien trilogy. I would say yeah. then, The Rock. Okay. List of films to watch. In I won't have order. done these by the. I won't have done these by no, the time it comes to the next podcast. <laughs> it, it's, look, if you've done Predator, okay. that's a, that's a big win. That's a big win. Yeah. I'm probably going to watch it next weekend. When oh, on the <laughs> honestly, in Spain. you won't be disappointed, and you'll be forever quoting it after that. Okay, it was a quote. Oh, okay. It's proper. It's a proper quotable film. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and listening, folks. Uh, we, I, I, I love these. Um, I think this is great. This was a really good, thoughtful one. It was very distinct, as you said, not necessarily poignant, but they don't always need to be. Um, that was episode number 11. Thank you very much for taking the time to pay attention to us rambling, um, and we will catch you all on the next one. Yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks, Tom. <laughs>